the correct TV stream in back hey, uh, the network? Jeff? So I was trying to find a YouTube channel to send them. Victor is asking for the YouTube link that they will be streamed on to the Texas TV. Right, that's right. Right, direct TV stream is ATT, but a different service. Also, and Jumper, can you talk to uh, YouTube, Chris, Chris, please? YouTube, but they're going to load it up on the YouTube after the fact. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, this. Alright. Yep. Uh, I'll tell you what, let me... Yeah, what is it being broadcast on? Um, that really is... Pelican Network. Pelican Network. Stay, right. They, they're kind of statewide, aren't they? Or what they well, it depends on what you have. Like Pelican Network on Cox is channel 11 and channel 16, but if you have uh, Direct TV Stream, which is ATT, it's not on. Oh. So that's what I'm trying to find. Uh, yeah. oh. I know uh, it's Cox on Sports is a shit. This is a long play. I have that one. I have that one. A lot of it's on your view, but not quite. Uh, not quite. Uh, yeah. quite. Try it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, talk to Chris.
I just wanted you to talk to me. On a beautiful sun-drenched afternoon here in central Louisiana, we welcome you to Natchitoches. We're thankful to be inside the event center here in Natchitoches as we get set for the Walk of Legends. It's a pregame show, if you will, before we induct the class of 2022 into the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. Good evening, everybody. I'm Victor Howell. It is great to have you with us on what is a special night to celebrate athletes, coaches, and so much more here in the state of Louisiana as we induct the class of 2022 into the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. Our inductees have been in town for the last, oh, it's about 72 two hours. They've had some luncheons. They've had some fun at different areas here in Natchitoches. And tonight's the big night where family and friends will go just to my left inside the event center and we will have the induction and we'll be bringing it to you live. And it's great to have you with us. We have some of our legends standing by, some of our current inductees as well. But it's my pleasure first to say hello and welcome an old friend of mine who's on the selection committee. He's also the sports information director for men's basketball and so much more at LSU and a class of 2020 inductee. It's Kent Lowe. How are you, sir? It's great, to, to, it's great to see you. Great to see you. What a great week it's been. Absolutely. And I know you were, you've been a, such a big part of this being on television. I know you started this years ago to get this to where we're now doing what we're doing now and televising live. But all your in involvement, it's still, I'm sure, very fresh and entertaining to see that new class come through each and every year. Well, that's it. There's so many stories you're going to hear tonight. You're going to meet a lot of these people over the next hour before the ceremony begins. And then we're going to tell some stories about these inductees that you may not know. And I think that's always the most interesting part of the induction evening. You know, and when you talk about the, the pure wealth of athleticism and athletes and sports in, the, in the, the outdoor state, if you will, for Louisiana. Last year, I remember we talked fishing. We're going rodeo this year. We're going boxing and a 1932 gold medalist being inducted tonight. There's so many stories that most people just don't even know existed, and then you get to really enjoy it tonight. Well, that's it. Dr. Eddie Flynn won his Olympic medal 90 years ago. We're honoring Jay Cicero tonight on the 30th anniversary of the U.S. Olympic trials in New Orleans, which was the big first step for the Greater New Orleans Sports Foundation. We're going to relive the memories of Eric Andelsek, Tony Robichaux, so many people tonight. Susan Jackson, the star Olympian, and we've got plenty of footage of Brittany Snee striking out batters at, at LSU softball games. And LSU had a lot of footage of that. I know you put a lot of work getting to this point. Now you get to relax. I'll try to take over for you. Get through the stage so you can enjoy it. Congratulations on an outstanding class, and we look forward to bringing it to everybody here tonight. 
always great to see Thank you. Thank you, Victor. Glad to have you with us again. I, I appreciate the invite so much. Let's talk about it. He just mentioned talking about the memory of Eric Andelsack, former LSU Tiger who tragically lost his life so early in life and made his way to the NFL. His brother Andy is here. I'm going to bring Andy right behind me here and say hello. It's great to see you in person, sir. You. Welcome to Natchitoches. Congratulations to you and the family Thank on, on uh, Eric's behalf. What has it been like seeing so many people this weekend celebrate Eric and what he did, not only at LSU, but what his career was doing in the NFL. Oh, it's tremendous. Uh, look, there are college and high school players that uh, played with Eric that are here tonight, along with family and friends. And it's great to see everybody again, catch up on those stories. Uh, we're so honored and proud to have Eric finally uh, become a member of the Hall of Fame. Oh, and certainly well due, if not overdue, if we should say, for everything he did. But the one thing that's always so nice, too, is you see, it's been years since Eric wore the purple and gold. And um, I believe, and I think you and I talked us. Aren't we just past the anniversary of his death? I think it was two days ago. Is that correct? That's that's correct. And 30 years uh, Thursday, and actually today was the day that he was buried. Um, and uh, you know. 30 years past, Victor, um, you know, it helps heal the pain, but it doesn't take away the memories. We all yeah. remember Eric, and uh, Eric was on his way at LSU. He, he had a good career beginning with the Lions, and I think he'd have been inducted earlier if he had played and was, and was alive a little bit longer. And you and I are going to talk about this a little later when we're on the stage, but what I was leading to that, thinking of the fact that it's been 30 years uh, since Eric's tragic death, yet so many people still remember him so fondly and still talk about the playing days and the impact he had at LSU and what he was doing in the NFL. <laughs> Certainly. I'm just here. I've heard many stories, but living in Thibodeau still, uh, you, you, a day, a week doesn't go by where you're in the grocery store or out and somebody will stop and tell you an Eric story. Well, I, know, and, uh, <laughs> I know they are having a wonderful uh, taste of Louisiana. You were so kind to come over so we could say hello. Go back and have some food. Enjoy the evening. I look forward to seeing you on stage when we celebrate your brother. Me as well. Thank you. Absolutely. It's so great to see you. And we're going to have stories like that all night long uh, with Eric, uh, with Eric's brother, Andy, and so many others. Let's see if we've got Eddie Kennison coming over here. He's another former LSU Tiger. Somebody can say I was proud to say that I covered him in his career. How are you, sir? It's been, I think the last time I saw you, we were in carpool line. Our kids happened to go to some of the same school in Baton Rouge. You doing well? Doing super fantastic, brother. Now, 2017, I believe, right? That was your induction year. Yeah. You come back here now for the Walk of Legends, bring back the memories from when you got the call and celebrated the weekend as an honoree? That's right, brother. And uh, it's always fun to come back. This is my third time back uh, visiting uh, with the Walk of Legends, and uh, they do such a great job here. It's always great to come and see the new inductees, brother. So very, very happy to be here. And you've got some, some purple and gold. I know you were before Eric Andelsek when you played at LSU and you were uh, or you were after Eric, right? But you were before Kyle Williams who's going in tonight. A lot of reason to celebrate what he was able to do and go on like you to have an outstanding NFL career. Brother, and I tell you uh, Kyle played 13 seasons. I played 13 <laughs> seasons. I think about it. Kevin Falk played 13 seasons. I mean you just think about the guys that come out of LSU that has come out and guys that will come out. We just produce great football players coming out of Louisiana. What's one of the big memories you have of this weekend when you were the inductee, like like uh, Andy is celebrating for Eric and so many others right across the street? What stood out to you that you remember from 2017? Oh, uh, just spending it with my family, having my kids, you know, see dad be inducted into Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. And that way they can go out and they can talk about it. They can uh, uh, share in the experience and the excitement and just seeing the enjoyment on my family's face. That was well, pretty awesome. I'm glad you had a slow weekend because I covered you on the field. And if your kids were watching you, you were a blur. They would have never seen it. It's so great to to see you again. Look forward to seeing you inside and enjoy the weekend. Thank you, Victor. I appreciate you. Man. Former LSU Tiger, Eddie Kennison. Always great to see you, bud. Thanks for stopping by. Now a legend, a true legend in more ways than one, both as a coach and just as a woman, what she does in Baton Rouge and the LSU community. Come see Dee Dee. I'm going to step up. I'm going to step up so you can come on to this side. I'm getting I'm getting a little hug with Dee Dee. Love this woman. We, my morning show days way back in the day, I spent some of it with Dee Dee and everything she's done and watch her build the program. And tonight, you get to come and celebrate one of your own in Susan. And Jackson. I know that's going to be very special as a coach to see Susan. You know, somebody described her as a cup of peppers. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, she is, she's that and a lot more. Yeah, so. What, what, what do you remember? And I know we're going to hear some of you in the video um, that being presented for Susan tonight. Your memories of her and what she was doing with you when you were still the LSU coach for Jeanette. Well, you know, she was never short on enthusiasm and, and had a uh, an incredible sense of humor. And she was hard on herself sometimes, which was, you know, made her a driven athlete. But she never lost the perspective of it's got to be fun. And um, just, you know, her family and the whole, the whole thing. She was just such a package. And, you know, to be an All-American and to be as academically successful as she was, but to also be a, a, a social 
person, and, and she was just the whole the total package. And one thing, Didi, that I, I celebrate when I looked at the class and talked to everybody in the class coming in for tonight is so many people that helped build programs. Okay, Tony Robichaud, late Tony Robichaud, what he did for UL baseball in Lafayette for the Raging Cajuns. Kyle Williams, after Jerry DiNardo and the football team dipped a little bit, a guy named Nick Saban comes. He's on the defensive line, first national championship. All the years you did to build gymnastics, it's the hottest ticket right now in Baton Rouge, thanks to you and people like Susan Jackson, Brittany Steed, what she did for softball. There's so many going in that help build foundations for what we're all enjoying today. You know, it's about momentum, and it, it, that's a, a dangerous drug, and when you get that momentum and you get it going and Susan was the beginning of that momentum, and then you you had a, a, a legion of great athletes. I mean, I've been blessed to, to coach, I think, some of the finest athletes that have worn the purple and gold, but it's the pride, the passion, and the purpose, and what you do every day, day in and day out, and Susan came, and then we grew from that, and, the, and we were given the tools to be successful. The Our training facility now is the finest in the nation, uh, but just to know that you have somebody like Susan that has accomplished everything that she did. She's the only gymnast to ever won the national championship in the all-around event. That's a big deal. And then to go on and, and win all the other awards that followed that. She's the icing on the cake. I hope you'll stay with us later when you heard Didi talk about winning that overall in the nation because I'm going to ask her about that. Your aunt's, Her answer might surprise you about winning that award and what she knew about it or didn't know about it in the terms of existing. Well, the key thing is she won it in the first rotation. You know, there's two rotations right. at the championship. She won it in the first rotation. Her score had to stand, and there was a, a lot of great competition to follow. And the scores usually get higher as the night wears on. And, you know, we're sitting at the hotel watching, and the last <laughs> performer on the last event, we didn't see celebrate we held our breath and and she won it let me ask you just quickly before i let you go just coming back and seeing all the activities what everybody's enjoying and being out here as a legend of course we know you're legendary those of us who know you so well but coming back to enjoy this you know you go through the museum and and you see the shotguns and the skis and all of the all of those memorabilia and all of those things and joyce walker's jersey and all of the all of the great athletes that have come before and you you think well geez how exciting is what's going to come after right and you know this is 50 years of title nine yes. and 40 yes. years of nc2a women's athletics what a celebration and for susan to be inducted in that 50 year anniversary i think is really special and you know the the article that robin fambro did in the advocate uh last week was an absolute piece of work and um just to be a part of the history of title nine and to see where we're going is exciting absolutely and i know that's Brittany sneed newman who's also being inducted softball from lsu that means a lot to her and we're going to talk about that as well well, it's always so great to see you, Didi. Go enjoy the evening, and we'll see you inside. Thank you. A legendary LSU gymnastics coach, Didi Bro, here tonight to, ce to celebrate Susan Jackson. Let's bring in another one of our current inductees. He's a member of the class of 2022, outstanding defensive lineman for the LSU Tigers, national champion, went on to an outstanding career with the Buffalo Bills, and it's Kyle Williams. How are you? Do I, do, I, do, I, do I introduce you as Hall of Famer or coach? Because I know you're walking the sidelines right now in North Louisiana. Uh, my mom named me neither. You can call me Kyle. She loved me. She gave me a name so just hit me with that one that's one answer to. how has the weekend been going for you when you and I talked on the phone we had trouble getting in touch with each other because you're working so hard with the current high school class once it's slowed down you've come down here how's the weekend been for you it's been great I think the, the best thing is uh, have an opportunity to share it with my kids and uh, have them be a part of all the events and run around and and get to enjoy some of the success when you it, your Buffalo career is so recent but do you ever go back and show the kids the LSU films and winning the national championship in New Orleans and talk about your days in Baton Rouge you know they've seen some of it but it's it's not something Something that we pull up uh, they got an opportunity to be a part of so much in Buffalo so they're very familiar with uh, with football it was it was all they knew for a lot of years and we have an opportunity to go back to LSU once in a while and they get to see pictures or an all-american painting or whatever it is so they know enough about it but uh, they they're more glued in on the NFL side of things but they're learning more and more now that we're home you are still very close to uh, any of the guys that were with you in the purple and gold before you moved on to the NFL uh, sure I played golf with Andrew Whitworth a couple days ago we lived together in college you know, I still talk to quite a few guys, some of the coaches, uh, talked to Tommy Moffitt this week, so lots of guys that I speak to that uh, they were big parts of my career there. Well, I had the pleasure when I was at the local affiliate there covering you as a Tiger and then following your professional career. It's great to see you again in person. Glad you enjoyed the weekend, but the big event's still to come, and I hope you enjoy tonight. Yeah, we will. We're excited about it. Thank you. It's great to see Kyle Williams. Kyle, thank you so much. You, much. you bet. Yes, great sir. to see you. Enjoy you again. So once again, we are at the Event Center here in downtown Natchitoches. It's the Walk of Legends. As we get you set for the top of the hour, when we start at 7 o'clock, we'll, we'll be taking you inside. Mr. Porter, come on over here. 
I'm going to step aside before we take a break. How are you? Yes, sir. It is great to see you. T. Barry Porter, one of the first inductees from Rodeo Style, and I know you're here to celebrate tonight another rodeo inductee and Mr. Duhon. That's right. How well do you know Steve and his accomplishments? Uh, I, I rodeoed with his daddy. Okay. And uh, I've been knowing him a long time. Yeah? When, when you come back and, and see all of the events here and the inductees, does it bring back the memories for you? Oh, yes, sir. I'll tell you, I told him. I was inducted in Oklahoma City okay. at the Cowboy Hall of Fame there, and I enjoyed this more than I did that. Well, fan, well, that's great to hear that you enjoyed this one more. What about your rodeo days at Santa? I was saying earlier, one of the unique things about this class, we've got softball, we've got gymnastics, we've got rodeo. In terms of the scope of everybody that comes into this Hall of Fame, how special it is? It, people don't realize what it is. You get to see old friends, mm -hmm. and... Uh, it, it, you get to do things that uh, see what's happening in other places. How many of your old friends still living? I, I apologize that I did not know your specialty. I've worked with Steve getting ready for tonight, and I know his induction, his specialty was the, was the, uh, the calf wrestling. What was your specialty in rodeo that, that stands out for you? I rode calves and bulldogged. Okay. Still wrestled. And uh, I, uh, <coughs> I had... Had to kind of quit a lot of it because had a wife and four kids. I had to make a living. <laughs> <laughs> Understand that completely. I have a wife and four girls at home. I know what you mean. It is so great to see you on the Walk of Legends. You truly are one of those. And I hope you enjoy this evening with Steve going in. We enjoyed it, and it was really nice. And uh, I enjoy coming back. Well, it's always great to see you. We hope you keep coming back for years to come. Um, they didn't put me where I played football. I played football in Leesville at high school. Okay. But as a center and linebacker, I didn't have a substitute. So you played both sides all the time. Yeah, that's right. That's where you got your toughness for rodeo, right? Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> and it worked out pretty well. A Hall of Fame induction. I went to LSU a year, uh, I mean a se uh, semester, and uh, I, I wasn't smart enough to comprehend everything no, I, don't, I don't believe that I don't believe that for one minute but it is great to see Mr. support enjoy enjoy the evening tonight enjoy it it was nice and you, everyone in Leesville come see us go see that's right Leesville come see him come here to the Hall of Fame enjoy, enjoy evening you think you're gonna go right up here absolutely oh absolutely thank you very much we're gonna take our first time out here on this Saturday evening it is getting crowded in here why everybody's making their way into the event center we'll be back with more from the Walk of Legends right after this This is Ryan Terrio, 5'11", former two-time World Series champion. And this is what happens when he throws a baseball at a normal window. Now, here's Ryan throwing at a Storm Force Impact window from Relief Windows, then swinging a bat at it. To get your Storm Force Impact windows today from Relief Windows, check out ReliefWindows.com. Visit our showroom on Pennywood or call 288-8138. Relief Windows. At the Holiday Inn in downtown Alexandria, we offer every amenity our clients would need and more. Renovated and reopened in 2016, we are the only full-service hotel in the area with a wide-open convention space, restaurant bar, hair, skin, and massage care spa, and a bank branch. Our hotel is also pet friendly and features an entire pet park right outside, as well as a Tesla supercharger station. Our rooms are styled in a sleek, contemporary fashion, all equipped with 42-inch televisions and top-quality beds. If you're in the mood for a bite to eat, our on-site restaurant, The Levee, features delicious contemporary Louisiana cuisine. Our service for our customers is unmatched in the area, and our awards speak for themselves. Our mission is to provide you with the utmost superior service possible. Holiday Inn, downtown Alexandria. There's nothing else like it. Natchitoches Parish is a special place. 
For generations, its people have built their lives on family and the community they love. Its people pulled together to make Natchitoches Regional Medical Center what it is today, offering advanced specialties like heart care, lung care, and other life-saving treatments. Its people appreciate getting care close to home from a medical center they trust. Natchitoches Regional Medical Center, inspiring excellence every day. There's a place where you can celebrate Louisiana cuisine and festivals of fun and childlike magic. There's a place to discover 300-year-old history, yet modern exhibits are around the corner. There's a place to explore Creole plantations behind every bend. So come celebrate, discover, and explore Natchitoches, Louisiana's oldest city. For more information, visit Natchitoches.com or call 1-800-259-1714. The annual Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame induction ceremony is sponsored by the following State Farm Insurance Agents of Louisiana. We welcome you back to Natchitoches and the Event Center. Hope you're comfortable where you are at home. It's a hot one outside, but it feels great inside as the crowd is starting to file in. We are here at the Walk of Legends. This is our pregame show, if you will, leading up to the top of the hour when we are ready to induct an outstanding class, class of 22, into the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. One of those inductees in this class is a gentleman who's used to being here, but he's used to being here because of his involvement with the Hall of Fame. This is why I think this is so unique, because now he gets to enjoy it. This is Garland Foreman. I've been told the defuncto mayor of Bunky, by the way, for all, all, all the work. Is that okay? We can call you Mr. Mayor? Yep, we can. <laughs> it's great. Uh, not the first time I've been called that. <laughs> it's great to see you. Congratulations. And I think I think what's so neat about this is that you, as a sports writer, get to come here and your involvement with bringing people in. But now you get to enjoy it as an inductee, and it's certainly well deserved. How has it been for you on the other side this weekend? This weekend has been outstanding. The, the Hall of Fame has really done a good job. But if you go back, I mean, I've been coming, I don't know, 30, 35 years now. And, uh, it's always been good to, you know, sit behind the cameras, not being in front of the cameras, but this week I'm in front of the camera. I'm so honored. My family is so happy. Uh, Avoles Parish seems to be very happy. They turned out in good numbers. So it's fun. We're having and I'm ready for tonight. And I certainly don't want anybody to turn away because we want you to stay with us throughout the evening. There's no NHL tonight, no big games going on. You can stay here and watch because I don't want to give away the story. But one of the things that's really unique with Mr. Foreman is that you've always been in the small town. You've been in Bunky. Opportunities to leave. They presented themselves. But he's a small town writer who's had such a passion for sports. And I just wonder how much enjoyment you get from that when everybody's always looking to move up and move out to go bigger. And you have it. Yeah, I, I, I've really enjoyed covering sports on a small weekly level over the years I, you know I, I made a joke at the luncheon today that you know all these people have been all over the United States doing this and I went to Plosheville, Bodoc, <laughs> Hesmer and some other little small places to, to do things. Sports has always been a part of my life and in small communities with weekly newspapers they, they want the news, but they want their sports, too. They want to hear about their kids and what's going on, no matter if they win or lose. And that's something I made a point of doing in my years there. You and I, when we talked earlier, the, I, I've had the experience on the television side doing high school sports. Your passion for high school sports, it's throughout the state, and it's to be celebrated. So if you're going through Bunky, don't just stop for those famous pies now. Make sure you get up a paper and you can read the work here. Hey, I know it's been a fun weekend for you, deservedly so. I hope you enjoy it inside. I can't wait to see you on stage. We'll talk a little more about your career and officially induct you as a Hall of Fame member. Thank you, man. And I appreciate everything. Absolutely. Appreciate everything. It's great to see. You would you enjoy it. You too as well. Carl and Foreman, the defunct mayor of Bunky, has been doing it for years and years. One of the best in the state who's racked up nothing but award after award for his work and loves the small town work, as you heard. He'll be going in tonight. As well as this man right here, Steve Duhon. We just talked to Mr. Porter. First of all, it's great to see you in person. Thank you. Congra Brett. Congratulations. Thank you very much. It was fun talking to Mr. Porter earlier, also a, a, a Hall of Fame inductee in his days in wrestling. He said he used to wrestle with your dad. My he and my dad rodeoed quite a bit, and we got to watch Mr. T. Barry growing up, so he was a very big inspiration and an idol to us all. How, how has this weekend been for you? We talked on the phone. I tried to reach him on the phone earlier. He was coming from Texas back here to Louisiana. Then when I got him, he was on a tractor. He was nice enough to be talking to me, always doing something. You've got to slow down now, and you've had a chance to enjoy the last 48 to 72 hours. How has it been? It's 
phenomenal. Uh, people here go out of their way uh, more than what I expected. It's just great to be recognized for Louisiana. I grew up here, still a Cajun, so I, it's something above my head really and, I, and as i was mentioning earlier i think what's so unique and you're a perfect example how when you talk about sportsman's paradise and everybody loves fishing and hunting but like in this class we're having a boxer we're doing rodeo last year we did fishing it's so wide scoped in terms of what we have here in the state and you're a perfect example of that sticking with rodeo and, and falling in love with the passion yeah uh it's something i love to do i think everybody here that's getting inducted did what they love to do and there's a lot of cowboys in louisiana not a lot of them traveled out like i did and t bear you know he went all over the world I went all over the world and I just wanted to do it and that's what I love doing traveling and rodeoing I know we're going to talk about it a little more tonight on the stage but was there ever thought that once you were doing it you were going to get out or was it one of those things where the more you did it the more you fell in love with it and knew you found your calling it, I loved it. I, I never even thought about quitting. Sometimes get slow, but I, I've never went to a rodeo think, boy, I don't want to be here, you know, like go to jobs. I don't want to be here. I never went to a rodeo and thought, I don't want to be here. I, every rodeo I pulled up to said, let's win first, you know. Uh, and that's, that's, that's when you know you're enjoying what you're doing. And we'll have a great story we're going to talk about on stage about the pride of Louisiana when he actually did go to another state. But we'll save that for the induction ceremony. Steve, it's great to see you in person. Congratulations again. Look forward to seeing you for the induction. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Steve Duhon, one of the best in the rodeo business. He's going in tonight as part of the class of 2022, as is this man on the business side. I'm going to bring Jay in on the other side of me here. I apologize to get my earpiece all straight. Jay Cicero from the New Orleans Sports Foundation. How are you, Jay? Congratulations. Right. Thank you, Victor. Appreciate it. It's been, as I told you when we talked on the phone, it's been a hot minute since I've seen you in person. Have, have you slowed down a little bit from your last big event, which was the Final Four just a couple of months ago? And it was a great one. Congratulations on that, by the way. But have you started to slow down a little bit or are you still going? Oh, Thank you for the accolades on the Final Four, oh, but we have not slowed down <laughs> one single solitary bit. And uh, looking forward to a to a little bit of time uh, to to catch our breath now, uh, and then we get back at it in a month. So we're we're just uh, uh, wrapping up Final Four still. Yep. It's so big, and uh, it was a tremendous success for Louisiana and New Orleans. Uh, right place, right time. Kind of like the story of my life. <laughs> right place, right exactly time, right. and uh, we had the we had everything going for us, and it just came together at the last minute. And very happy that it came out like it did. Well, you heard Jay say he hopes to take a little time off. Why is he getting back to work? You might have heard. Oh, there's a Super Bowl coming around the bend here in a couple of years. I know they're already working on that. But you're a baseball guy at heart. I know it started. I, I read a great article that you started out. Somebody wanted to offer you to work the parking lot of the Texas Rangers. You didn't do that, but you got your start in Shreveport, just right down the road here. That's right. You know, my my godfather was a scout for the Houston Oilers and lived in Arlington and, and worked everybody out at UTA. So I went and stayed with him at uh, CO Bricada. Um, I don't remember that name from a long time ago. Uh, he, uh, I stayed at his house. I went, I, I went over to the stadium. I kind of barred my way in, talked to the guy who, who, uh, who managed the parking lot. He said, "Hey, I can offer you a job for four hundred dollars here <laughs> a month." And I was like, "No, nah, I can't move to move to Dallas on four hundred dollars a month." And he said, "I understand." So. I, uh, I went to Shreveport, and, and, uh, and a couple years later, I was working in baseball. And then you work in baseball, then he goes down into New Orleans, and now he finds himself at the Sports Foundation where he's been for quite some time. It's go big or go home with you all. I know everything you do is big, and it's successful. But let me ask you on the personal level what it's been like here, coming in, seeing all the great athletes you're going in with, but also to celebrate you and what you've done for the city of New Orleans and the state of Louisiana. How have the last 72 hours been for you? Well, it's a huge honor for me, especially uh, receiving an award named after Dave Dixon. Uh, what an incredible man uh, who was an incredible leader uh, in this state, especially in New Orleans. But to be around these athletes, uh, and Teddy Allen, uh, by the way, but to be around these athletes and, and, and Garland, uh, uh, who, uh, who have achieved so much uh, and learned so much more about them personally, uh, it's, it's amazing. And, and you look at a guy like Steve Duhon, now we've got two NFL football stars that are here, yes. uh, and and I think Steve Duhon could take them. <laughs> he is he is tough. He is a one, one tough tough cowboy. Yes. And, and as I learned, he had football for a year, but he decided to go rodeo. And I think that's one of the great things with this class. It's so wide ranging with, with 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 everybody. But it's a great honor for you. Congratulations to you, and I look forward to seeing you at the top of the hour when we make it official. We'll chat a little more in there. Sounds good. Thank you. Absolutely. John. Okay. Thank bye you bye. So much. It's so great to see you. Jay Cicero with the Greater New Orleans Sports Foundation. He's going in tonight with the Dave Dixon Award. Everything he does in New Orleans with all the big events and. We're we're going to talk more about those right over there. What's that now?
now. Tell me again. Come on over here. We'll chat a little bit. How are you? Hey, hey Victor Howell, how are you doing? Justin yes, Justin, it's good to see you as well. I got the whole crew. You got the whole crew behind us. This is Justin Rober Show, the son of the late Tony Rober Show. I'm going to let you introduce the family because it's my first time seeing everybody. Come on in. Say hello. Hi, everybody. How are you? Nice to see you. You doing well? Yes, sir. Yeah, you look great. Fantastic. Justin, you want to have the opportunity to introduce everybody? This is my mother, Colleen Rober Show. How are you doing? My brother, Austin. Austin, how are you? My nephew, Lon Paul. My nephew, Liam. My sister, Ashley, and her husband, Lon. Oh, nice to meet you all. Congratulations to all of y'all on behalf of your husband, your dad. It's great to see everybody here. I know we really enjoyed having a chance to talk to you a little bit on the phone. And I know this would be a special uh, special event to, to celebrate your dad and everything that he was doing and has done for so many years. Yeah, you know, we, we anytime we get the opportunity to, to, to relive his legacy and everything that he's he's done in the community, that he's done for the state of Louisiana, especially at Magnese NUL and the likes of, uh, you know, Skip Burtman and, you know, Yvette Gerard's over there and just seeing so many prominent people in the state of Louisiana, you know, it's it's, a, it's an honor and a privilege for our family. And I know I had a chance to talk, I didn't get the chance to talk to you all, but what was very neat, talking to him on the phone, is talking about carrying on the legacy, what you all discovered after Tony's passing, the box. That's going to be part of our story when we talk on stage, but the box that sort of answered the question about what he was trying to teach the players in terms of life, not just baseball, but you all found a box that, that I know was, was special to everybody to help complete his story. Yeah, he, he, would, he would refer to it as kind of like a baton in a relay race, you know. Uh, his goal was, was to get these players to hand off the baton to another person. And, uh, you know, uh, for my brother and myself, you know, our goal is to continue to, to, to keep handing the baton off and uh, live what he preached. I know you all are doing a wonderful job. I had the honor of being in College World Series covering LSU and ULL when he was up there in Omaha. And it was a pleasure covering him. We're going way too soon, but we will celebrate Tony tonight. His son will be with me on stage as we talk about him. We're going to talk about a very special book, and we're going to talk about the box as well. It's great to see you in person. I look forward to seeing you on stage. It's very nice to see all of you all. Enjoy the evening as we celebrate Tony. Nice to see you again. Enjoy your night, okay? Very nice to meet you. Nice to see you all. The Robo Show family will have a great time celebrating Tony, what he was doing with the Raging Cages as the head baseball coach. And we're going to talk about a very, uh, very, very special book right there. We're going to go to break. All right. We'll take another time out as they still continue to file in here at the event center in Natchitoches. We're taking you to the top of the hour. It's the start of the induction ceremony for the class of 2022 in the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. We'll be right back. Some things in life smell delicious. Others, not so much. Like a gas leak. Propane, for instance, is naturally odorless. That's why we add strong odorants to alert you if there is a leak. So if you ever smell gas, turn your system off at the tank and call your propane dealer immediately. Propane is a safe and exceptional fuel, and we want to keep it that way. When you support, she soars. When you donate, he delivers. When you provide, they prevail. Since 1987, TAF members have lifted the minds, bodies, and spirits of LSU student athletes, making sure they have what they need to succeed in competition, the classroom, and in life. When you give, they go. Whitney is community sensitive. They make a commitment to make a difference in communities like Fifth Ward. Home ownership is a gateway to financial freedom and ultimately better communities. We live in these communities, our kids go to school here, and we want to be a part of the success story. We encourage our families that it's not if they can buy a home, it's when they can buy a home. And so we're excited when the families have finally achieved that goal. I need something better. Better rates, better perks, and less drama. 
Sounds like you need a cashback credit card from La Capital. You'll score $150 when you spend $1,500 in the first 90 days. With no annual fee and unbeatable rates, you'll save more for the things you love. So what do you say? I'm saying bye to banks and hello to credit that works for me. Apply today. Call 800-522-2748 for details or visit hellolacap.com slash credit. The annual Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame induction ceremony is sponsored by the following State Farm Insurance Agents of Louisiana. Welcome back. This is the place to be on this Saturday evening in Louisiana, right in the central part of Louisiana. We're here in Natchitoches. I'm Victor Howell, and it's great to welcome you back to our pregame show. It's the Walk of Legends as we lead you up to the top of the hour and the start of the induction for our class of 2022. Claney Duplishan off to my left. We both came up from Baton Rouge. The difference is he's been successful for over 40 years coaching track. He's been at one school in Baton Rouge for those 40 years. He coached at two, but all of his success of 43 has been at one. Coach, it's great to see you in Natchitoches. How are you, and how's the weekend. I'm fine. It's been an unbelievable weekend. It's very humbling. It's been a great experience. Uh, a lot of people came over, you know, from Evangeline Parish, Mamu, just to come over. A lot of friends. It's been a, a an occasion that I never dreamed would have been this great. It's it's one of the highlights of my of my life. I saw him at the hotel earlier. I said, save that voice. I need five to seven minutes on stage because he's been celebrating all weekend long. But as, as you've been here for the weekend and you look back on it, how has it made you reflect on what you've been doing now for the better part of four decades there? Uh, in Baton Rouge with the same sport bringing kids in and out and having success I it's it's just you know a lot of people have said that they've been in the right place at the right time and I just feel that that has been me I've been in the right place with the right athletes with the right support staff coaches assistant coaches uh, resources at Episcopal they've always given me anything I've wanted it's it's just it's been great to be there at, at Episcopal. I know we're going to talk about this later on stage. So, again, we want you to stick with us when we have the ceremony tonight. But this is a man that still does it old school in terms of discipline and respect as he's seen kids come and go. And I was very intrigued when you said you never touch a trophy. You steer the kids. You coach the kids. You try to bring them up. But in the end, when you're successful like you are, 25 straight years until this past fall of winning a state title, he never touches a trophy. You want the kids to do that. I, I tell the kids it's their team. I want them to buy into the fact that it's not my team team I don't want to own the team I'm not an owner of it I'm just managing the team and so if the seniors buy into that then they become become my assistant coaches and they take care of it and it's their team so when we win trophies and things like that I want the team to go get it not me because it's their team yeah, I think that's fantastic, and I'm glad so many people have come to support you. I know a lot of them are right behind the camera waiting to see you again. Enjoy the rest of the pregame show. I look forward to seeing you on stage when we induct you officially. Thank you, Coach. Doing this, please. Absolutely. Thank you, man. Absolutely. It's so great to see you. Clanny Duplishan, it's so great to have him. We're going to tag team here with, with, uh, with some track talk now. We've got Harold Porter and Hollis Conway. It's great to see both of you gentlemen. Welcome. Thank welcome. You. It's great Thank to you. see you all. Little, little track action and some track stars from UL, but I know you all are not only here to celebrate like Clanny Duplishan, 43 years at Episcopal High School, 20 five straight state titles. I mean, we're not messing, we got some heavy hitters here, right? But I know you all also celebrate here because of your history with UL, late Tony Robichaud. We just saw his family and to see him, see him going in tonight as well. Yeah, Tony, I tell you what, baseball, I told Hollis, I said, you know, I've never been to the softball field, but I've been to the baseball field. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so Yvette wasn't too amused by that, but hey, it's, it's where we go. So well, We're, we're going to talk to Yvette Gerard in just a second because she has a player going in that she coached at LSU. But of course, Tony, so legendary at UL Lafayette of what he was doing, raising kids and bringing that program up. And I was saying earlier tonight, so many inductees that we have in this class are some that help build programs. But now, as we celebrate here in 2022, are at a completely different level than when they were when they were there yeah I was uh, assistant athletic director when I moved back to Lafayette two years ago and Tony used to come by and just the life lessons that he would teach me and to those kids is just tremendous and uh, I, I love the guy I miss him and it's so good to see his family man what he's done is what we all should do transcend sport to make a difference in this world and that's what I'm going to talk about with his son Justin and about the book that came out talking about the life lessons how's it been being back here seeing so many uh, previous Hall of Famers coming here and just kind of celebrating what is all Always an outstanding weekend. Well, I tell you, 
it. This building is new. It's like the, this is like the museum is new. So I mean, we old though. I mean, so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm old. Well, Hollis is yeah, older I than me. I enjoy being around the old people <laughs> when they ran in yards instead of metric. You know. <laughs> Age before beauty. There you go. So you can't let the beauty. Hey. This is the age. You can't let them. Get, you can't let them get away with that. It's great seeing you all back here and having fun. And I certainly hope you have fun tonight. We got a great class in 2022, and look forward to seeing them in there. Yeah, right. they do a great job. Thank you. Excited to be back. We appreciate y'all stopping by. And all right. Don't let them get away with that. Now, come all on. Right. Come keep on, that. Oh, keep yeah. that. Keep that beauty before age. Keep that beauty before age. He's got that. Let's welcome in one of our current inductees in the class of 2022. And we're also going to bring in her coach because her coach is legendary, already inducted. And I haven't seen you in. It's been a minute, Brittany. It's great to see you again. Brittany Sneed Newman and her coach, Yvette Girard. Yvette, how are you? It's great to see you. I've seen you more recently, but it's so great to see her. Totally, it ages so well, I can still bring it from the circle as well. With, with Strike anybody out. Numbers that can go for days. How has the weekend been for you? When we talked, you were bringing little ones around over there in Waco because you're coaching over there at Baylor now. But once you got here and it slowed down, how's the weekend been for you so far? It's been amazing. I just can, still cannot get over the, the hospitality. The, uh, the 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 community. I mean, it's South Louisiana, so um, this place is amazing. But I've just been in awe the whole weekend. Enjoy reflecting back and as people celebrate what you did. Because I know when we talked, there's a lot of stuff you didn't focus on with all the success you had in terms of numbers. But you remember the team's success. And so now you come back and everybody wants to celebrate you. Has it brought back a lot of memories? It really has. I've, I've, I've been asked a few, uh, asked some questions that it's kind of helped reflect back in time that I really hadn't thought about individual questions. And so um, that's been fun to think about. And, and uh, But still focusing on the team tonight, having one of my teammates here and Coach Gerard here and Coach Moore here. I'm just thankful that they're able to be here. People that don't know the story, she started at LSU with Glenn Moore. When Glenn left, it was a big deal when this woman here went across the Atchafalaya, left UL Lafayette, and came to LSU. And Yvette, Brittany and I had talked, and we're going to talk later on stage, what it meant to her to have somebody like you as a coach. But you come over to LSU, and you wind up with somebody like this in the circle who, oh, by the way, next thing you know, you wind up at the College World Series. Hey, don't think that that didn't factor into the, the decision. <laughs> I've recruited her so hard in Lafayette and was just devastated and depressed when she picked LSU for two reasons. She was 60 miles down the road and I knew she was going to beat us every time it meant for the big marble. So it was such a blessing to be able to be her coach for two years. and. She just dominated her opponents. And I know you're still in Baton Rouge doing broadcast for softball games, and one of the themes that I noticed looking at this class tonight that you can speak to as well, you were a coach that helped bring the program to the next level where it is now. She's a big reason why. Susan Jackson in gymnastics, Dee Dee Bro works her tail off. Susan Jackson elevates that program to the next level. What Kyle Williams did, what Tony Robichaud did, but specifically with softball, to see the softball program, remember, LSU didn't always have it. It came back, and then you come there, Brittany is there, and and then you all took it to the next level. What that means for you as a foundation to see one of those key components being recognized for her career? Well, she was a, a cornerstone in the SEC. She was truly the most dominating pitcher the SEC has ever seen. She probably still owns some records. Double-digit strikeouts every night, but no question, she brought LSU to the pinnacle to get us to the College World Series. And with her in the circle, we had a chance to beat anybody in the country that night. Absolutely. And here's another little teaser for you. Brittany Sneed Newman had 10 no hitters count them that's one more than nine double digit 10 no hitters later tonight we're going to talk about how many she remembers that might surprise you until then it's so great to see you again congratulations hope glad you've enjoyed the weekend i look forward to seeing you on stage yvette always a pleasure to see you enjoy watching one of yours go in tonight in the class absolutely yvette gerard and Brittany sneed newman two of the best to be in the circle at lsu i recognize this man he's usually in his pads and the black and gold in the dome but Slimming down, looking good, and can still get it done. It's Jari Evans. Jari, how are you, sir? I'm doing well, doing well. Comes back from Philly, up there now as a businessman. I believe you're doing a, are you doing a podcast, a radio show? Uh, yeah, we do a live radio show from uh, 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern time on Fox Sports Philadelphia. It's called uh, On the Gambler Station, and then we uh, put it on the iHeartRadio for our podcast part. Congratulations with that and the restaurant business, but right now we're talking about his days in the black and gold, and it's great to bring you back here in, in the state of Louisiana. How's it been since you got back in town and drove up here to Natchitoches? Uh, it's been kind of hot, but... Uh, <laughs> Welcome back south. I know you remember it. You used to have to practice in this stuff. No, I know, but uh, it's, it's been amazing, man. I'm, I'm, I'm honored and just to go in to the uh, Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. So many great athletes, so many great players and announcers, and uh, I'm, just, I'm just thrilled. 
Mullen to speak so highly of your career. I had the pleasure of watching your speech when you were inducted into the New Orleans Saints Hall of Fame, deservedly so. But now you're going in with so many other athletes here to celebrate what you've done in terms of representing the state. Yeah, it's amazing, man. Like, you know, Louisiana has a lot of great athletes, you know, not just in football, but in a lot of different sports. And, you know, with, with the great athletes, there's great coverage that comes with it. So just, you know, going in with, you know, rodeo champion and a coach that's won 64 state titles, 25 in a row. I mean, that's awesome. That's awesome resumes. Now you're up in Philadelphia. You're still keeping your eyes on New Orleans, though? Oh, yeah, for sure. Most definitely. Yeah, New Orleans is like my second home. Well, yeah. It's great to have you back in your second home state for everything you did with the black and gold. Going in, already a member of the New Orleans Saints Hall of Fame, now into the State Hall of Fame. Jari, it's great to see you. you. Look forward to seeing you on stage tonight. Yes, sir. Thank you. Jari Evans, who's one of the best to ever do it down there for the black and gold. There we go. Nothing like a grand entrance. She's one of the best in the business, everybody. You can see her nightly hosting a comedy show because she's one of the funniest as well. If you don't know who this is, this is Susan Jackson. How are you, Susan? Good, how are you? Uh, that's the far and away the best entrance, best entrance we've ever had. You nailed it. I'm only 4'11", so sometimes I have to do big things to stand out. Well, that was fabulous. How have you been? How's the weekend been for you? It's been so fun. They've done such a great job of you know, putting on every event and making sure everybody's happy and taken care of. And it's just been really amazing. You got to spend some time with Didi. We talked to her a little earlier to, and to reminisce on the days gone by. Yeah. So the first time that I came to this event was five years ago for Didi's induction. And to be back as an inductee is pretty special. Yeah, we have. She has a very unique relationship with the Sports Hall of Fame. But again, that's something we don't want to give away now. We'll, we'll, we will talk about it a little later. I was asking Brittany as well with so many numbers, so many accolades and for you as well. I know you're so involved. You're thinking about the team aspect of everything. But now that you're back here, have you started to reflect or have numbers started coming back to you for performances or certain meets or certain activities that went on that found so successful? Yeah, you know, I've been asked what meet stood out for you. And I, I always think of it's always great to beat Alabama. <laughs> so that one sticks out. But also the first time that we made the Super 6 for Dee Dee. Mm -hmm. She was trying for 30 some odd years. And we were finally the team that got her there and kind of get the gorilla off her back. So that one sticks out. How about the class? You've gotten to meet everybody. And we just had Jari Evans, but we've seen Steve Duhon with rodeo. We've got softball. We've got gymnastics. How about meeting your classmates here for 2022? It's been really fun to meet them, hear their stories, meet their families. It's a, it's a star-studded class, and I'm honored to be part of it. Well, you have a great story as well. It's so great to see you, and I look forward to seeing you on stage. We'll have some fun out there as well. Susan Jackson from LSU Gymnastics, and great job. And we'll see. We don't... We don't. We don't have anybody. We don't have anybody doing flips like that. I huh? don't get. We get spoiled now. I follow that. Uh, I, 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 look, you and I can just go grab a bottle of water and sit back. We're not going to just do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> We're not going to be able to follow that. This is Corey Martin is joining us, who's going to be accepting tonight for his great grandfather, which is is quite a story. And the fact that we're talking about your great grandfather, who was an Olympic gold medalist back in 1932. What an what an honor for them. How has it been studying your great grandfather and learning the successes he had in the boxing world? Yeah, it's honestly it's been an honor um just a humbling experience so i've i've always known about you know his lore right like the the gold medal um his amateur record all these you know all his athletic accomplishments but then to kind of dive in into like who he was as a man as a person for the family's been incredible uh very very humbling my family's just incredibly proud and honored to be here I was, I was born in New Orleans, grew up in the area, and a lot of people in the greater New Orleans area will know of Tad Gormley Stadium. Maybe what you did know is that his great-grandfather was coached in boxing by Tad Gormley. You start looking back at some of these stories, it's amazing to see what pops up and what you can learn. Yeah, no, it's honestly incredible. Like The deeper I dive in, just... Just, I'm just so proud, and, uh, and hopefully I represent him well tonight. And, and, oh, and, I, and I know you will. And, and the, the other story about him is he was so good in boxing, even better out of the ring. When he gave up boxing, he went into dentistry, state of Florida. But I know you've got some tremendous stories about what a man he was in that profession. Just so many people that he wanted to help. Yeah, yeah. So obviously he was a dentist. So we were kind of joking about it earlier with uh, Tim. Uh, you know, he would inflict pain and he'd, you know, f fix some teeth after, you know what I mean? Exactly. He's an incredible guy, unique person, just a beautiful soul. So. Yeah, just happy to be here and, uh, and, and honor him. Honor well, we look forward to talking to you on stage when we officially induct him. It's great to see you in person. Thanks so much. I'll see you on stage. We'll talk about it. It's Dr. Eddie Flynn, who is an ex excellent boxer and a dentist, dentist as well. 
another one that just needs My me. My name is Bert. Jones. I understand How that you very do? well. I know you, Bert. It's great to see you. Top of the day. You, to you. you and I uh, crossed paths years ago when we were playing golf in Baton Rouge for Cystic Fibrosis Foundation and Jim Crane. You'd come down every year, I and do. we would help. We would help that wonderful organization. Yeah, I appreciate you. Oh, man, um, I appreciate being down there and having the chance to do it oh, with yeah. you. How are you? I'm doing great. Everything's good in Ruston. Looking forward to football season this year. Yeah. And, Tiger Stadium and life is good. And you've got one of yours from Ruston. We, we met Kyle Williams or talked to Kyle Williams earlier. Outstanding career at LSU, now coaching up there in Ruston. So yeah. nice to see one of yours going in. Uh, you know, I, I, I laugh at Kyle. I say, Kyle, you know where my seats are. And since you were in high school, I sit up here <laughs> and I don't say anything. I just pull for the home team. So just know that you don't ever have to worry about me. Well, he was tough to get in touch with because he was constantly working with the kids in the summer. I know I saw you here early with your dad, right? How was, how no, was actually that was... Uh, Pat Garrett, my father's doing great. Is your father doing good? Okay. He's, he, he and Mom are almost 98. Uh, we went to the farm and worked in the garden. He said, Bert, you know, I think... I think I'll pass tonight. Uh, but I, you, I apologize. I saw you walking in. I thought that was you with him early. Well, Pat Garrett, his father was my high school football coach and my father's high school football coach, and he's in the Hall of Fame. And Pat Garrett was, I think, the fastest man in the world in 1964. He ran a 9 20.7220. Wow. So that's who I'm with. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, that's, that's great. Last thing before I let you go, Burke, we're going to take a break. What it's like coming back here for, for all the activities to see everybody enjoy what the Sports Hall of Fame means. It really is. They've done just such a spectacular job here. The facility itself is great. And each year you have a good class of inductees coming in. And I like to come back every year or so whenever I'm in town just because I see a lot of good old friends and just like to support it and they've done a wonderful job yes, they it's great to see you. i hope to see you on the golf course again in baton rouge i'll be there I, i'll october. i'll see you there in october the great bert jones joining us there and when does the rifle get done <laughs> doesn't he know i'm the show closer <laughs> well for christ sakes bert super fan was uh, that's what made you for crying out loud if you need to go story to story, you're going to lose to this guy. It's Tim Brando. It's great to see you, Tim. How are you doing? You, hey, let me ask you this. You, you do it every year at the lunch. How was the lunch? I know you had a lunch today. You do it every year for the class. How enjoyable is that for you to see them when they realize, hey, we're about there now. The induction is here. Victor, it's the best. They asked me to do it about four years ago before I went in, which was a year ago at this time, in the class of 20. And, you know, at so many parts of my life, whether it was from my Baton Rouge years, my New Orleans years, my Shreveport years, my Monroe years, come, I mean, just it crossed through my life. And, and almost 70% of the time, I know the history of these people just because, yeah. because I grew up here. Those that I don't, I'm amazed to find out all the things that I didn't know and why Louisiana is never struggling to find Hall of Fame members. As a matter of fact, we're struggling to keep out so many that are also richly deserving of being in. Well, you're one of the best voices for, or throughout the country to represent Louisiana in this class. Again, so representative, rodeo, gymnastics, softball, the works. All over the place. And, and again, uh, this time of year, it's just a reminder to me of the path taken. I tell young broadcasters all the time, the journey's the best part. Hashtag, the journey's the best part. You understand that because you remember me when. And, and Bert was part of that. Doug Morrow, he and I, Goober Morris, Harold Hertham, Steve Schneider did the Superfan Show for three years statewide out of Channel 9. Yep. That's part of who we are, part of why I'm where I am today. Sure. Well, it's always great to see you. We're going to take a break before we head in there to, to get the show started. Good it's always good to see you, Tim. Tim Brando, we're going to take our final time out, and when we come back, we will be getting ready to take you inside for the induction for the class of 2022 for the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. We're glad you're with us here in Natchitoches, and we'll be right back. Thanks, buddy. everyone for being out here today for the Natchitoches Regional Medical Center Junior Training Camp. So it's amazing to be out here today with so many Louisiana Sports Hall of Famers. They are out here doing the drills with the kids today. And it's a tremendous opportunity for them uh, because they're teaching their sport too. I mean, I know we have some softball players and everything out here like that, track and field, but they're also just teaching the game of uh, football and basketball and how great it is to just enjoy the game. And it's about having fun. It's about being out there and having fun. All right, 
I'm Danielle Williams. I'm here with the New Orleans Pelicans. And we're really just here to have a good time here uh, with the kids. You know, they're here to develop. They're here to have fun. They're here to learn more about the game of basketball. And they're also here to become huge, huge Pelicans fans. So we got us in here. We got the Saints outside. They're doing some football work on the field. And we're super excited to be here with the uh, Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. Ready, go. Some interesting station. Oh, yeah. Oklahoma oh, yeah. drill going here with the yeah. flags. Yeah. Roar jump there. Diving touchdown catches. DV stations. They're hitting a lot of big tackles and sacking Tom Brady over there. Hopefully, you see a lot of that this season. I love working with kids. Um, they're, they're, there's no better profession than trying to make kids better. Uh, people first and then athletes second. If the ball is right here, if it's above your eyes, your thumbs are down. If it's below, your thumbs are up, okay? Oh, this guy, I got him. We all know that coaches at, at, this, at this age can make or break kids. You know, they can get them excited about oh, sports or they can really turn them off. And this is such a pivotal part of their career, of their lives, you know, to get them interested in trying to you know, to bite, bite in and, and, and to, to get into programs. And like I said, uh, it's a very important part for me. And uh, hopefully I've been able to do that and make him enjoy it and, and, want, and want to keep playing, you know. Show, for sure, for sure. Oh, Brent. Yeah, it's uh, extremely important to encourage our young athletes to um, to live out their dreams in sports and, and other things and, and just the proper, uh, proper techniques and always to have fun out there. Here we are, the 2022 Tiger Athletic Foundation Roundtable Lunch. Tim Brando here, and it's always my honor to have the opportunity to visit with all of the inductees in a rather relaxed atmosphere with a number of their friends, family, and even some fans from all parts of Louisiana that make their way in. It's a bit more intimate than the actual induction ceremony coming later tonight. Perhaps we'll get a few more laughs. That's what I'm trying to induce from all of them. After he would destroy opponent's oral cavity, he could then put them back together. He became a dentist, right? He did, yes indeed. <laughs> I'm gonna beat the hell out of you and then gonna make some money off you. <laughs> hey, what's going on? I'm Corey Martin. I'm representing my great-grandfather, um, Dr. Eddie Flynn. And it's been a phenomenal experience here this weekend. I'm really honestly blown away. Didn't know what to expect, but it's been first class, so big experience for me. Obviously, I never, you know, met him. But learning about the man he was for my for my family. So he he stepped in and really was like a father figure for my mom, her sisters, and their brother because uh, their father passed away early on. So not only learning about the athletic accomplishments, um, which are very well known, but just the type of person that he was, I think, stuck out to me the most. So it's been a really uh, really cool experience to kind of see it from that angle. You know, as an outsider from Texas coming into Louisiana, it's been pretty cool to be adopted in the way that Tiger fans do, and they rally around you, especially as a student athlete. Um, you know, I've made friends for life in, in Baton Rouge and in Louisiana, and it's just to people that made sure that we understood the crazy Cajun culture. You know, they took us fishing and made sure we knew how to catch a redfish and peel a crawfish, and so it's just been, it's been amazing. Our congratulations to Brittany and to Susan. Thank you, Sweeney. Whether they come from football, boxing, the rodeo, or even broadcasting and sports riding, that's what it's all about. One thing we know for sure, the food is always fantastic, and everyone's in a great mood when they get here. It's my job to make sure that they stay that way once they're done. We went with Jari to football, somewhere with basketball. Yeah. And then a bunch of kids came with me, and we did you know, some punctuation drills. <laughs> Uh, worked a lot of semicolons, got in a fight with the kid over the use of commas and just left in a huff. But other than that, it's been, it's been a great way.
There's a place where you can celebrate Louisiana cuisine and festivals of fun and childlike magic. There's a place to discover 300-year-old history, yet modern exhibits are around the corner. There's a place to explore Creole plantations behind every bend. So come celebrate, discover, and explore Natchitoches, Louisiana's oldest city. For more information, visit Natchitoches.com or call 1-800-259-1714. Natchitoches Parish is a special place. For generations, its people have built their lives on family and the community they love. Its people pulled together to make Natchitoches Regional Medical Center what it is today, offering advanced specialties like heart care, lung care, and other life-saving treatments. Its people appreciate getting care close to home from a medical center they trust. Natchitoches Regional Medical Center, inspiring excellence every day. Some things in life smell delicious. Others, not so much. Like a gas leak. Propane, for instance, is naturally odorless. That's why we add strong odorants to alert you if there is a leak. So if you ever smell gas, turn your system off at the tank and call your propane dealer immediately. Propane is a safe and exceptional fuel, and we want to keep it that way. Natchitoches Parish is a special place. For generations, its people have built their lives on family and the community they love. Its people pull together to make Natchitoches Regional Medical Center what it is today, offering advanced specialties like heart care, lung care, and other life-saving treatments. Its people appreciate getting care close to home from a medical center they trust. Natchitoches Regional Medical Center, inspiring excellence every day. The annual Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame induction ceremony is sponsored by the following State Farm Insurance Agents of Louisiana. where you can celebrate Louisiana cuisine and festivals of fun and childlike magic. There's a place to discover 300-year-old history, yet modern exhibits are around the corner. There's a place to explore Creole plantations behind every bend. So come celebrate, discover, and explore Natchitoches, Louisiana's oldest city. For more information, visit Natchitoches.com or call 1-800-259-1714. Natchitoches Parish is a special place. For generations, its people have built their lives on family and the community they love. Its people pull together to make Natchitoches Regional Medical Center what it is today, offering advanced specialties like heart care, lung care, and other life-saving treatments. Its people appreciate getting care close to home from a medical center they trust. Natchitoches Regional Medical Center, inspiring excellence every day. Some things in life smell delicious. Others, not so much. Like a gas leak. Propane, for instance, is naturally odorless. That's why we add strong odorants to alert you if there is a leak. So if you ever smell gas, turn your system off at the tank and call your propane dealer immediately. Propane is a safe and exceptional fuel, and we want to keep it that way. Natchitoches Parish is a special place. For generations, its people have built their lives on family and the community they love. Its people pull together to make Natchitoches Regional Medical Center what it is today, offering advanced specialties like heart care, lung care, and other life-saving treatments. Its people appreciate getting care close to home 
from a medical center they trust. Natchitoches Regional Medical Center, inspiring excellence every day. The annual Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame induction ceremony is sponsored by the following State Farm Insurance Agents of Louisiana. A national network television broadcaster since the mid-80s and an untiring promoter of his home state and its sports heroes from Shreveport and UL Monroe, Tim Brando. Nobody has ever coached in the SEC longer or any more successfully or impactfully than the living LSU legend who is especially proud tonight, retired Tiger gymnastics coach, Dee Dee Bro. The only American to win two Olympic medals in the high jump. A three-time NCAA champion at ULF yet for the Ragin' Cajuns. His American record clearance still stands at seven feet, ten and a half inches. Shreveport native from Lafayette, Hollis Conway. Another Title IX trailblazer in the sport of tennis as a major championships official in four decades. An Alexandria native, Marie Gagnard. Another Title IX hero who took the UL softball program from snow fences to three appearances in the College World Series, then led the LSU Tigers to two more. From Lafayette and Baton Rouge, Coach Yvette Girard. L.J. Haas Garrett is the godfather of Ruston High School football, retiring as the state's winningest all-time prep coach, representing his father from Ruston, Dr. Pat Garrett. The Rustin Rifle, an LSU All-American, a number one pick in the NFL Draft, the 1976 NFL Most Valuable Player from Rustin and LSU, Burt Jones. A two-time NAIA All-America basketball player, Louisiana College, and a very successful coach at Xavier and LC from Alexandria, the late Janice Joseph Richard, represented by his sister, Pam Jones. An NCAA champion sprinter for LSU and a star wide receiver for the Tigers football team before an excellent NFL career from Lake Charles, Eddie Kennison. A championship basketball coach at Nichols who became a dynamic athletic administrator from Baton Rouge. Don Landry is represented by his son, Jeff Landry. A world-class sprinter who represented the United States in international competition after a great career for the Ragin' Cajuns and an NFL wide receiver from New Orleans, Harold Porter. Ladies and gentlemen, one of America's first great rodeo cowboys and our state's first ever pro rodeo competitor, pro rodeo Hall of Famer from Leesville, Louisiana, please welcome T. Barry Porter.
Louisiana's first girls parade All-America basketball star at Pitkin High School, a great player, then a championship winning coach, and later athletic director at Louisiana College, Sheila Thompson Johnson. The winningest basketball coach in Southland Conference history with 401 wins and seven NCAA tournament appearances from ULM, Mike Vining. And now let's welcome the Hall of Fame's class of 2022, a supremely talented and accomplished writer for publications around our state who is still stacking up LSWA writing awards a Distinguished Service Award in Sports Journalism winner from West Monroe High and Louisiana Tech, Teddy Allen. From Thibodeau, where he was a high school All-American, he became an All-American offensive lineman for the LSU Tigers and anchored Barry Sanders' offensive front for the Detroit Lions. The late Eric Andelsek is represented tonight by his siblings, Andy and Renee. The CEO and president of the Greater New Orleans Sports Foundation, whose fingerprints are on every major sports event in the Crescent City, including Super Bowls and Final Fours. Tonight's Dave Dixon Louisiana Sports Leadership Award winner from Shreveport, Jay Cicero. A standout as a true freshman linebacker at LSU who decided his future was in the rodeo arena, and boy was he right. A three-time world champion, pro rodeo hall of famer, from Opelousas, Steve Duhon. Sixth nationally in the history of all high school sports in America, having coached 64 state championship teams in cross country and track, including a streak of 25 boys cross country titles from Mamou and Episcopal High School in Baton Rouge, Clanny Duplachan. He arrived in New Orleans in 2006 and immediately became a starter. And the New Orleans Saints took off. A six-time Pro Bowl selection, a leader on the 2009 Super Bowl championship team from Philadelphia, Jari Evans. Undefeated in 144 amateur boxing bouts, an Olympic gold medalist for the United States, 90 years ago in the 1932 Los Angeles Olympics, from Loyola in New Orleans, the late Dr. Eddie Flynn, represented by his great-grandson, Corey Martin. The consummate country journalist with hundreds of writing and editing awards, the only person to serve as president of the Louisiana Press Association and the Louisiana Sports Writers Association from Avoyles and Evangeline Parishes, Louisiana College grad, Garland Foreman. A member of Team USA as an 11-year-old, she is one of the greatest gymnasts in Southeastern Conference history, a three-time NCAA individual champion, and a 12-time All-American, only the second gymnast to enter our hall from LSU, Susan Jackson. A pitcher at UL and McNeese who became head coach of both schools' baseball program and produced a state record 1,177 wins as he became the only coach in NCAA history to be the winningest coach at two programs in the same state. From Crowley, the late Tony Robo show tonight is represented by his wife, Kyleen, Colleen, and grandson, Lon Paul. A four-time All-SEC pitcher, a two-time All-American who rewrote the conference record book and the player who led the Tigers softball program to its very first College World Series from LSU, Brittany Sneed Newman. Wrapping up our 2022 class, the Class 5A defensive MVP from Ruston High, a starter on LSU's 2003 National Championship football team, an All-American for the Tigers, and a six-time Pro Bowl selection in his 13 seasons with the Buffalo Bills. From Ruston and LSU, Kyle Williams.
Ladies and gentlemen, one more time for this Louisiana Sports Hall of Famers Class of 2022. And we'll be back with more from Natchitoches for the 2022 Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame inductions, induction show presented by State Farm Insurance Agents of Louisiana. The 2022 Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame induction ceremony is brought to you by State Farm Agents of Louisiana, Rapids Regional Medical Center, La Capital Federal Credit Union, LA Propane Dealers, City of Natchitoches, Hancock Whitney Bank, Tiger Athletic Foundation, Northwestern State University, Natchitoches Regional Medical Center, and the New Orleans Saints. This is Ryan Terrio, 5'11", former two-time World Series champion. And this is what happens when he throws a baseball at a normal window. Now, here's Ryan throwing at a storm force impact window from Relief Windows, then swinging a bat at it. To get your storm force impact windows today from Relief Windows, check out ReliefWindows.com. Visit our showroom on Pennywood or call 288-8138. Relief Windows. At the Holiday Inn in downtown Alexandria, we offer every amenity our clients would need and more. Renovated and reopened in 2016, we are the only full-service hotel in the area with a wide-open convention space, restaurant bar, hair, skin, and massage care spa, and a bank branch. Our hotel is also pet friendly and features an entire pet park right outside, as well as a Tesla supercharger station. Our rooms are styled in a sleek, contemporary fashion, all equipped with 42-inch televisions and top-quality beds. If you're in the mood for a bite to eat, our on-site restaurant, The Levee, features delicious contemporary Louisiana cuisine. Our service for our customers is unmatched in the area, and our awards speak for themselves. Our mission is to provide you with the utmost superior service possible. Holiday Inn, downtown Alexandria. There's nothing else like it. is a special place. For generations, its people have built their lives on family and the community they love. Its people pulled together to make Natchitoches Regional Medical Center what it is today, offering advanced specialties like heart care, lung care, and other life-saving treatments. Its people appreciate getting care close to home from a medical center they trust. Natchitoches Regional Medical Center, inspiring excellence every day. The annual Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame induction ceremony is sponsored by the following State Farm Insurance Agents of Louisiana.
Hey, everybody. Uh, okay. <laughs> that was Mayor Ronnie Williams. He, he believes in talking softly and then carrying a stick. And sometimes he takes it to real extreme measures. Um, <clears throat> look, if you're a business leader in our state, you probably know that you might have experienced some staffing issues, and it's no different here at the Hall of Fame or the Louisiana Sports Hire Association. So me and Ronnie Rance are kind of, well, hot potato this host thing, but it's a real honor to be able to spend this time with you. And if everybody will pull the rope, well, I'm sure we'll get through tonight just fine. Uh, remember that it's not going to be perfect, because if it were going to be, then the good Lord would not have anybody in the Louisiana Sports Hire Association to have anything <laughs> to do with tonight. Here's how things are going to go. And a minute ago, when we start inducting uh, your friends, we're going to introduce them with a video that's going to be two or three minutes. And then Victor Howell, our friend who will be up here in a second, he's going to interview the inductee for uh, six or seven minutes. And then clap just as loud as you possibly can, please. And then we'll do another one, okay? So that's how that's going to work. Right now, we want to, if this operates correctly, we are going to show you a video with some special recognition of some information that you need. Fifty years ago, not many of us remember if we are old enough to have those memories at all. But as you enjoy tonight's inductions and all the festivities this weekend, and you've been amazed walking through that fabulous museum down on Front Street. All of that was what Jerry Pierce was doing 50 years ago. He was a young and creative PR man for Northwestern State College in those days. A few years after, he worked as executive sports editor of the New Orleans Times-Picayune when he was just 24 years old in the early 1960s. He already was a cornerstone of the Louisiana Sports Writers Association, a group that proudly had launched the Hall of Fame at the same time the LSWA was founded in 1958. The Hall did not have a home until Jerry Pierce and Northwestern State changed that. A half century ago, Pierce became the Hall of Fame chairman and created a display at NSU's Prather Coliseum. He put together an induction honoring the only Hall of Famer elected in 1972 the great football star Y.A. Tittle. The Hall of Fame finally was something people could come visit. Over the next 19 years, Jerry Pierce hosted induction festivities and nurtured that display. What we enjoy all year long walking through the incredible museum and the celebrations we have each summer to expand the Hall of Fame membership all traces back 50 years ago to Jerry Pierce. Tonight, we take a moment to salute this living LSWA legend. A 2000 Hall of Fame inductee, a man who continues to serve his university as an executive vice president. Ladies and gentlemen, please show your appreciation to the man we call the father of the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame, Jerry Pierce. Jerry, can you come up here for a minute? Or did, did you, there's Jerry. Uh, Jerry Pierce was the MC of this event for a long time, so I'm kind of a poor excuse for one. And then one day he said, nah, I'm not going to do it anymore. So we called in me as an emergency, but Mr. Pierce retired the trophy. Jerry Pierce, y'all, will, will you please give him a big hand? We wouldn't have a Hall of Fame without him. Get your picture made. There we go. Would you like to say anything, Mr. Jerry? I'd rather do one of those flips like that. Well, okay. We'll work on that. Thanks. Thank you, Jerry. We got another video. Okay. I'm making sure we don't have another one. I guess we should have possibly practiced. Uh, we usually do. It's been a, a, a weird year. Thank y'all for hanging in there with us. Y'all, this is one of the greatest nights in uh, athletics in our state. Uh, you're from a state that's really rich with all sorts of talent and stories and uh, teams. 
and we think, uh, despite everything, all the ball games y'all go to year round, this night rivals any night um, in the state on the on the schedule. Right now, what I want to do before we uh, have our first induction is introduce you to our past DSA winners. We do have one more tape. Okay, uh, if you would like to do this, send your resume to MC Front Street, Natchitoches. We got one more video for y'all. Before we get started inducting the class of 22, we're going to break out an award that's only presented once before, eight years ago. Let me tell you about one of the best friends the Hall of Fame has ever had, Brian Sheremy. Brian is not a boisterous leader, but he is an incredibly effective one, and he's also an accomplished author. His book, Louisiana Lures and Legends, is highly respected in duck hunting circles. Not bad at all for a proud native and resident of Cutoff and a college golfer at Nichols, whose success and dedication to good causes has also allowed him to tee it up with golf's greats and major champions like Payne Stewart, Jack Nicholas, and our own David Toms. That's because Brian is a giver. He has a track record of jumping on board and helping worthy causes, like his continued leadership as a longtime Tiger Athletic Foundation officer, a catalyst for the Four Kids Foundation and the First Tee Foundation promoting golf for inner city kids, a board member of the PGA's Zurich Classic in New Orleans, and there's a whole lot more. But tonight, it's his leadership with the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame Foundation that we are celebrating. Brian has been a board member for nearly a decade. He served two pivotal terms as the foundation board president and continues to play a key role in foundation endeavors to support the Hall of Fame and our museum. Brian is the kind of person that every championship team needs. He doesn't seek attention, but he continually earns the respect and admiration of his colleagues in every endeavor he embraces. Tonight, the Louisiana Sports Writers Association, the parent organization of the Hall of Fame, joins with the Hall of Fame Foundation Board to make this historic presentation. We created the Marty Mule Hero Award in 2013 to honor the deep impact recipient Kent Lowe has had on the Hall of Fame. Marty was as good a sports writer as we've ever seen in our state, and nobody cared more about the Hall than he did. Nine years later, for the second time ever, we are presenting this award to our friend and yours, truly a hero to the Hall of Fame and to many other great causes. Please welcome Brian Sheremy. Susan Jackson, where are you, Susan? She's over there. Hey, can y'all give Susan a hand for the cartwheel thing? That's actually cheating. Nobody said we could do that or several of the other game wanted to. How about a Brian? Thanks, Brian. Brian, we have something to give you. I'm, I'm sorry. Hang on one second. We have something to present you. I'm almost sure. Look behind you. Am I correct? Oh, you already gave it to him. Oh, God. You know what? Okay. Who needs that? Okay. Let's, what can we possibly make up to do next? Let's do the DSA prior award winners. What do you say? The DSA, of course, uh, we give them to guys and girls who are storytellers of our state's heritage and tradition, and they also is involve service to the state. So how about a big hand for all our DSAs? Roy, it's Roy Brown, Bill Baumgartner, Jerry Bird Jr. representing his dad, Jerry Sr., Beverly Dower Swanson. Beverly represents her brother, Bobby. Robin's here, their scooter. Hey, Scooter. His real name's Kenneth, but nobody calls him that. Larry from SLU. There's Dougie, Dougie Fresh, Kent Lowe. Hey, Dan McDonald, Sheldon. How are you? Glenn Quibido. If you ever need something cooked uh, in Crowley, get a hold of him. And Jerry Pierce, the backup mayor of Natchitoches. Give all these wonderful people a big hand, please. This is a hardworking bunch and my backup family. I think we're going to get a picture. Anybody else out there like to get in this picture with these people? 
look. They look almost lifelike, don't they? Isn't that weird? Okay, y'all go cartwheeling off the stage. Very good. Good job. Way to go. Way to go. Thank you. Y'all are lying. <laughs> I have to feel like a Southern Baptist preacher. I'm just shaking everybody's hand. Oh, bless you, my son. Way to go. Good job. Come back next time. Okay. Pierce wants you to call him when okay. you're ready. He needs a new MC. Keep the sermon short. Okay. <laughs> If y'all would, uh, I know it don't look like much, but there, it's a hard-working bunch. And um, if you'll look at your program, um, you can uh, read in there, excuse me, during the next video that doesn't work properly, use your time to read the stories that they wrote, really good ones. And if you found a bunch of mistakes, please, just for the love of God, don't tell us about it tonight. We worked really hard to get all that stuff lined up correctly. Okay, I told you about the DSA award winners, and we're fixing to induct one right now uh, of Voles Parish and Evangeline Parish. There's nobody there tonight, so if you need something from there, go get it, because they're all here to support my friend Garland Foreman, and here's his story. Our first Distinguished Service Award winner is one of the most honored, well-respected sports journalists in the state. After starting a reporting career at then Louisiana College in the late 1970s, Garland Foreman would go on to serve as managing editor and sports editor of the Bunky Record for over 30 years. Since 2018, he's been publisher of the Ville Platte Gazette and 13 weekly newspapers for the Louisiana State Newspapers Group across central and north Louisiana. He's what I'd call a newspaperman's newspaperman, which means his, he's, he's developed his craft to a degree that, um, that you don't often see, and certainly you don't see in today's world. But, uh, you know, he's touched everybody, whether they're athletes or politicians or just everyday people with everything that he's done. And that's what makes him so special. And, you know, he, he ran a paper where he did everything. And you don't often see that. Foreman is the only person to serve as president of both the Louisiana Press Association and the state's Sports Writer Association. He was in charge of the LSWA when it began to make the initial plans that brought the Hall of Fame ceremony back to Natchitoches in the early 2000s, and a decision was made to work for a permanent home for the Hall. While at the Bunky Record, Foreman received over 400 LPA awards for his writing, including an estimated 150 awards in sports writing and photography, outdoor writing, and layout. He was a great mentor for a lot of younger journalists working with him, mainly through freelancing opportunities, but what Garland meant is that he is a perfect example of someone who didn't get his break at a big newspaper, uh, didn't work in a big newsroom, yet made his mark. I mean, the, the things that he was able to accomplish at the Bunky Record, winning LPA Newspaper of the Year, not once, twice, but three times, with a staff of essentially himself, serving as the reporter, the editor, the photographer, the page designer, sometimes even having to throw the newspapers. For more than 25 years, Foreman has covered sports at the high school and college levels all over the state. And all the while, he served on the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame Selection Committee. Garland Foreman was the news. If something happened, people looked to Garland to find out what happened in Bunky and the surrounding community because he was their go-to guy, unlike today. Uh, again, you don't see many people like that, that, uh, you know, he's a, he's a saint in Bunky. <laughs> he's, simp uh, he's so well thought of, so well respected, uh, and not just in Bunky, obviously in Louisiana Sports Writers Association as well. Tonight, this country journalist who is admired and respected by sports media around the state joins the hallowed hall with the highest honor a sports journalist in this state can receive. Ladies and gentlemen, the first recipient of the Distinguished Service Award in Sports Journalism and Louisiana Sports Hall of Famer, Garland Foreman.
They love you. I guess so, huh? They love you. They didn't love me when I wrote something bad, though. <laughs> so known as the country journalist, if you had to break the headline for the article you're about to write from your last 72 hours, what would it be? Fantastic weekend. Uh, it's just unbelievable what everybody's done from not just myself, but my family who's sitting over there uh, and everybody that showed up. It's actually been a great weekend. As you and I talked a little bit about during the Walk of Legends and we spoke on the phone earlier this week, you're, you're a mainstay in Bunky and in this business, whether it's print, radio, television, a lot of times the goal is to move up and move out and go bigger. You never did that. And never you've fallen in love with that. What, why? Well, I just I always felt that community news was the big thing. You know, not only just news, but sports. And community newspapers wanted that. I really think I, fe I fell in love with Bunky over the years. And uh, uh, it was a great thing, and we did very good o over the years there. So I'm excited. Where'd your passion for covering sports come from? Uh, I guess it, you could really say it started with the Alexandra Aces, a double-A team with the Padres back in the 70s. I was the bad boy. Uh, and I can tell you real quick the story. I was working there, and Lynn Rollins and Bill Carter and Al, Al Nassif, all Hall of Famers, was there. And uh, one day, uh, Bill Carter came to me and said, uh, Coach Billy Allgood, another Hall of Famer, wants to see you. So I went to, uh, to Louisiana College the next day, and he, he was talking to me, and he says, what, you want to be, what do you want to major in? I said journalism, because my father had been in journalism at uh, the Town Talk, and uh, he says, we don't offer that here. So we, we talked a few more minutes, and he said, uh, he said I, what I asked him, I said, Coach, what am I doing here? He, and he, he says, well, I'm looking for a trainer manager. I've watched you with the Alexander Aces. Bill Carter was, uh, not Bill Carter, but uh, Coach Allgood was the uh, official scorer there most games. And uh, I said, okay. And he says, I want to offer you a scholarship to be the trainer manager. And uh, I said, well, uh, you know, what, what are you going to offer? And he says, I, I'll give you a full ride. And I said, sold. I'll find something to major in. <laughs> you would know this very well because of your position. And I, I found it very interesting you told me this when we talked on the phone. You said you have a major concern and a real worry about rural parishes in Louisiana losing news coverage. I, I, now, I, now I, is, that, is that because of the onset of social media? Where does the concern come from? And what do you think you can do it, to ease that concern? It, it, it is really a, a big issue that's coming up. I mean, newspapers in the rural parishes uh, are, are hurting. The pandemic really hurt it, and it's, it's continued to hurt. And people in those rural parishes rely on the news and the sports, okay? I'm going to say both because the the communities in these rural parishes they want the news but they want the sports too and they need to see it the social media has played a large part into it there's some other issues that are coming up that we'll have to tackle down the road uh, but if certain things happen I'm really worried that a lot of these small community newspapers and I mean small will will uh, fade away. Well, as long as they got you, they're in very good shape to still get all of the news. I know you talked about, uh, uh, I asked you if you had one big event, and you reminded me of a football series with Bunky playing number one and getting a win, but earlier you said you had another story that came up to show the impact of a certain university it can have, even in the small parishes. That's right. Um, I believe it's 1996, LSU's in the World Series. We all know what happens, but that same weekend that Warren Morris hit that home run, the Corn Festival, and my buddies in the back are laughing because they know about the Corn Festival, <laughs> was, was being held, and there was a pretty large crowd for, for Bunky, and it's hot, it's, it's stuffy, but there was only two TVs. I had brought one, and I think the Lions Club had brought another one for their booth, and we, we were watching the game. Well, when the ninth inning started, and it was tied, if I remember right, and then Miami took the lead, uh, everything stopped. I mean, the carnival stopped, the music stopped, <laughs> everything stopped, and then when you looked around, I, I don't know how many people were around each little 13-inch TV <laughs> trying to see what happens, okay? 
And it just showed you the power of what sports could do in a, in a community. He hits the home run. An hour later, we're all back to normal, but everybody's happy. I bet everybody's, everybody's heart dropped when Brad Wilson stretched it to second. Yeah. He's safe, and then Warren Morris hits the walk-off. Well, congratulations. It's our honor to celebrate this night for you. This is your opportunity for the folks back there who are with you or anybody else who's watching that you'd like to say thank you to. Well, I like, let me start with my family first. My wife of 44 years, she's my rock. <laughs> Many nights when I was out covering a school board meeting or traveling on the road for a football game, she was at home with four kids, and she always held them together, and I really appreciate that. My four kids, uh, there's, there's Patrick, Susan, Jason, and James, has uh, really been good. They've really uh, understood when I was away from home, uh, so it was a great situation there. Then I have to talk about my, my dad. He's here, Ray Foreman, and uh, he had a big influence on my life. Him and his, his wife, Tommy, is here tonight. Uh, I had my mom, who was, who was a rock, too, and she, she passed away in 2007, but she was a rock. Uh, I tell people, it, it's a, you, you hear the saying, it takes a village to raise a child. I had several villages, okay? Uh, let, me, uh, let me add to that, all my friends from Bunky and all of that back there, uh, they, they put an ad in the program, and I don't know what page it's on, but if you see it, they talk about congratulating me, and they sign it from the idiots, okay? <laughs> now, <laughs> the, the, the term is, or at least I think so, they love to go to great sporting events, they love great food, and they love to party. So they, they are out there all the time for me. Uh, another group I gotta thank, thank real quick is the coaches that I've covered over the years, but I also wanna mention Coach Billy Allgood, Coach Gene Rushing at Louisiana College. They really made me who I, I, I was a naive son, they made me grow into a young man and learn how to work ethic to, to do the work. Uh, also got to thank uh, Louisiana State Newspapers and my boss, Daryl Guillory, and, uh, and all the staff that's with me, including my editor, Tony, right here. So uh, we have all of that. And then the last group I want to thank is those sports writers that are sitting back there in the back. That is one of the most loyal, hardworking group of people you can be with. Philip Timothy, him and I have been friends for years. And he, he showed me the ropes and showed me a lot. Glenn Quibido, I, I can just, Dan McDonald, I can just go on and on with the people back there that has really influenced me, helped me when I needed help. And of course, I tried to help them when they needed help. Well, for all the people in Bunky, the small rural parishes, the idiots in the back, you're in good hands with this man <laughs> right here. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Garland Foreman. Congratulations, Garland. Garland. I thought the people in the LSWA were the only idiot friends you had, but we were wrong by, by a long shot. Way to go, friend. Congratulations. Way to go, sir. You bet. I still have my ink pen that's shaped like a corn cob that Garland gave me. I mean, for a pen that features starch, it's, it's a heck of a writing utensil, actually. It's very nice. The Dave Dixon Award. Congratulations. One more hand for Garland, please. Since Thank y'all all for coming for Garland. The Dave Dixon Award we give to one who plays a decisive role as a leader uh, in sports or an administrator who not only brings credit to the state of Louisiana here, but nationally and even internationally. And our inductee tonight of the Dave Dixon Award is a young man who, when he was a young man in his mid 20s, he decided he wanted to be in sports. So he got out of what he was doing and did he ever get in sports? I think that you'll enjoy his story.
This year's winner of the Dave Dixon Louisiana Sports Leadership Award has been involved with sports in this state for over 35 years. He is Shreveport native Jay Cicero, who has served the last quarter century as president and CEO of the Greater New Orleans Sports Foundation. The Dixon Award is presented annually to an individual who has played a decisive role as a sports leader or administrator, benefiting Louisiana and or bringing credit to Louisiana on the national and international level. Thanks to Cicero leading local organizing efforts, the Crescent City has brought dozens of the top national sporting events to New Orleans. Jay and the Sports Foundation have done a tremendous job of keeping the, the legacy of New Orleans being a a great home for some of the greatest events in the, in the country and truly in the world. Um, it's, uh, it takes a lot of hard work and uh, it certainly t takes a lot of teamwork. It takes a lot of folks really, uh, as we say, punching above their weight class uh, to pull off some of these events. Um, but, but in doing so, we truly have had some remarkable uh, memories, some remarkable economic impact for our community. Um, some remarkable community services for our community. So um, when you look at what we've been able to do as a community and Jay and his group behind it, it truly has been tremendous. His father, Frank Champ Cicero, was a longtime state championship winning high school coach for more than four decades in Shreveport. So it's no surprise that two of Jay's first jobs were in baseball with the Shreveport captains and as the first GM of the New Orleans Zephyrs. Soon the Sports Foundation came calling, and with that, the work in bringing Super Bowls, NBA All-Star Games, men's and women's Final Fours, the National Championship Football Games, the New Orleans Bowl, and so much more. I'll tell you, one of the greatest attributes about Jay is really a mantra that we live here at the Saints, and it's, it's amazing what we can accomplish when no one cares who gets the credit, and that, that is Jay. He's never out front uh, looking to take credit. He's always in the back. Uh, just trying to make sure that the event is successful, his organization is successful, and, and perhaps more importantly, that his, his folks and his team is successful, and that's a testament to who he is. It's obvious that we have done this before, and I say we, uh, the Sports Foundation, because the level of calm was almost disarming. Uh, the level of, I know we're going to get this done, was almost disarming. Not just to me going through this the first time, but you know, talking to the folks at the NCAA, you know, uh, they're in a panic uh, every second of the day, but no one in the Sports Foundation ever was. And, and uh, you know, it goes back to relationships. You know, New Orleans is, is probably the, the most important city in the country for having good relationships and, and having relationships that make everything work. Jay is a master at relationships. Ironically, tonight's induction occurs 30 years after the Sports Foundation made its first big national splash as the organizing entity for the 1992 U.S. Olympic track and field trials. There is a Super Bowl in the near future, but we've got his attention here tonight, and we thank him in this, the sportsman's paradise. The Dave Dixon, Louisiana Sports Leadership Award winner and Louisiana Sports Hall of Famer, Jay Cicero. Son of a baseball coach, you were the youngest GM of a AAA baseball team. Did you ever think your career path would always stay on the diamond? And how did you wind up from doing that to taking over the city of New Orleans and all these events? Well, I, I, I kind of did think it was going to uh, end up staying in baseball. I knew it no, wasn't going to be playing on the diamond. Uh, but, you know, being born and raised in baseball and, and, and getting a dream job um, at 23 years old with the, with the Shreveport captains uh, under our wonderful owner, uh, Taylor Moore, um, you know, I thought that I would, I would go there to higher levels of baseball front office and was uh, I was actually going to interview with the San Francisco Giants and was uh, this was 1989 I was there for the earthquake game and I said I cannot move to, yeah. <laughs> I cannot move to uh, California uh, <laughs> after going through that experience so uh, I ended up moving to New Orleans the next year and that phone call was the one that you told me earlier this week kind of changed your life because you went from being offered a $400 a month job for parking at the Texas Rangers, right? And then you were selling clothes. Yes. Now you're one of the most influential people in New Orleans, if not the entire state with sports. But that one phone call in Shreveport, 
Did you ever think that one phone call would lead to what it's led to? Absolutely not. Uh, I mean, it's, it's right place, right time, and being around some great people. Um, and I try to explain that to our staff and younger people, my children and friends. It's, you've got to surround yourself with great people. And when you find somebody that is, uh, is great uh, and, and handles their business in the right way, you need, to, you need to be around that person a lot more and learn and absorb from it. So fortunately, Taylor Moore uh, and my father, obviously, growing up, uh, as a teacher and a coach, long time teacher and coach. At, he started at St. John's, was Jesuit uh, when I was there, and now it's Loyola. And, and growing up in those baseball teams, uh, there, are, there are guys that were on those baseball teams who were my heroes. One of them is here tonight, uh, Robert Pugh, uh, was, was one of my heroes growing up. And uh, he, he, was, he and his wife were uh, gracious enough to come tonight. But, uh, uh, you know, being around those type people uh, at different stages in my career has really been uh, uh, beneficial. How'd you learn about the uniqueness of your job? Because you will, you know, like sports writers here tonight, will have a deadline. You know, they've got an assignment, it's due by 11 o'clock, or you've got to make that newscast that night. Even if you're working on a project, you might work on it for a couple of weeks. You're bidding on things now that don't come to fruition five, six, seven years, you know, down the line. How did you learn to that there's such, it's such a unique angle. That probably, how'd you get to learn to work with that when you know that your deadline for that one event is still years down the road? Well, the bid processes for these events can be months and months and sometimes as long as a year. Uh, so there are different stages within those bid processes, almost like having a, you know, having a ball game. Um, you've got a timeline to hit. You've got to get prepared every, every, every time that uh, something's due. And uh, you just have to execute. You have to plan, execute, uh, and use your experience and your, uh, your resources uh, to bring things to the table to beat other cities. You know, uh, New Orleans is, a, as, as Dennis Lauscher said, uh, you know, New Orleans is one of the uh, smallest cities in the, in the country, uh, metropolitan areas in the country that host these major events. And uh, hitting above our weight class is, is, is something that we take a lot of pride in, but it takes a lot of resources and relationships to be able to do that. Uh, so the preparation for these events over the years, we're starting to prep for Super Bowl right now for 2025. Uh, a lot of fundraising to do uh, and a lot of planning to do in the next two and a half years. Yet, yet when you say pride, you know, you just had a very successful Final Four with an outstanding championship game just two or three months ago. And every time you host an event, everybody nationally will say, this city needs to host it every year, or this city needs to put, be put on a permanent rotation every two or three years. I'm sure for you and your staff, that's, that's all you can ask for. That's, that's exactly what we want. And, you know, the, uh, the, 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 everybody thinks that these events just come to New Orleans because there's a Superdome and there's a, there's a French Quarter, right? And there's a bunch of hotels. It's a business, it's a business proposition. And uh, I was very fortunate enough to work with Tom Burnett, who's here tonight also, who, uh, uh, was the chairman of the men's basketball committee for the NCAA this year. So he was in charge of the men's Final Four, and I've known Tom for you know, 20 or 30 years now. But um, he's in charge of the men's Final Four for the NCAA. We were in charge of the men's Final Four on behalf of New Orleans, so it was a great reunion for us, and it really just came to fruition uh, in, in a great way. And it was great. Mr. Burnett, congratulations. It was a wonderful Final Four this year in New Orleans. Everything you bring, Super Bowls, Final Fours, uh, you've had NBA All-Star Games, uh, is there any event that sticks out to you because of maybe the uniqueness of the fan base or the uniqueness of what it brings when it comes to New Orleans? Uh, WrestleMania. Yes, that's why I asked that question. I was hoping he would say that because that, that one, the, the uniqueness of the fans seems to stand out. Well, you know, I'm sure all the Garland's friends are huge fans uh, of WrestleMania. But I wasn't. I wasn't a, long, a few years ago. Was that a ago. shot at the idiots? Or was that a... I wasn't a few years ago until... I went to my first one, and uh, we, it was it's three hours of smiles, and it's pure entertainment, uh, athletic entertainment is, is what I like to, like to say, and I, I think uh, Steve Duhon here tonight could be, uh, could be a winner yes. uh, no doubt. of that event. <laughs> uh, he, he's stronger than anyone I've ever met in my life, uh, and could take, you know, he could take Jari and Kyle uh, tonight, I think, but uh, it, it is a, uh, an incredible event uh, that brings uh, people from 
30 countries in all 50 states to, to New Orleans and wherever it's hosted. Just a, just a great event, a fun time. Yeah, and you spread it out throughout the city. It's a wonderful event. Again, it is our pleasure to celebrate you just like everybody else tonight. I want you to have the opportunity to say your thanks to everybody you'd like to say thank you to. Well, I, obviously, my, my family, my wife, Lisa, who, who's here uh, uh, tonight. Uh, I mentioned Robert Pugh. Uh, Taylor Moore, who was a, uh, a, a great mentor of mine. And these are people who came into my life at, at, at the right time. Um, there is um, Mike Millay, uh, who was the original executive director of the Greater New Orleans Sports Foundation. He left our organization to go start Disney Sports, which was the, the complex in, in Orlando yeah. that uh, millions of kids and families have been to. Um, and when I went to work for the uh, Zephyrs and, uh, and I came back to the Sports Foundation, I was hired by Doug Thornton, who has received this award several years ago, uh, another, another great mentor of mine. Uh, the late Ron Gardner, uh, former uh, board member of ours, uh, uh, current uh, board members, uh, David Sherman and, and Sheriff Paul Valto, uh, great mentors, great people, um, uh, and, and, and consigliers to me. They, they know uh, that uh, this, this uh, business is not easy and that we all need help and we all need guidance, whether it's political guidance or, or, or to work through uh, issues that most people don't have any idea that happens for these events. But that, um, uh, you know, I'd like to thank them. And I've got another friend here tonight, uh, Gilbert Little. Uh, Gilbert started with us in the Shreveport for the, um, with the captains as our video coordinator, and he worked his way up to be the general manager of the captains after I moved to New Orleans uh, 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 several years, uh, gosh, several years uh, after <laughs> that. But, uh, you know, it's been a great life uh, and it's going to continue to be a great yeah. life and a great career. And it's, it's, it's all about people. And I, some of these people that I've mentioned are, are just wonderful people to be around and uh, they continue to be great mentors to me. Well, the way you represent the city of New Orleans and the state of Louisiana, when all of these big events come, you do a tremendous job. And just remember, sitting here in June of 2022, end of January, early February 2025 Super Bowl, you know that they're already working on it right now. Jay Cicero, congratulations to you in the Hall of Fame induction. Thank you very much. All right, I'm going to step over here to the podium right now to get ready for our next uh, video. Before I do, just so you know, the uh, subject of our next video will be appearing at the Funny Bone in Richardson, Texas from August 6th through 11th, and I think at Tattletales in Des Moines, Iowa with Susan Jackson in late August for three nights. So if you'd like to get tickets to see them, make sure you get tickets early. It'll be a heck of a show. Let me turn your attention to the video here so you can see our next inductee who's never met a rehearsal he doesn't want to go to. Where does one begin to try to explain the guy who many of you see every year at this event as your master of ceremonies, trying desperately to keep everything running smoothly? There is so much more to Teddy Allen than a folksy, everyman style that you don't see the rest of the year. But if you've been a reader of his around the state, you know that no sports subject is off limits, most times with a special Allen twist that brings a smile, a laugh, or sometimes even tears. One of the things they teach you in journalism is that it helps to write like you talk. And you listen to Teddy and you read Teddy and you go, well, that's almost exactly the way he talks. He doesn't try to overwrite. That's one of the terms that people use a lot of times is that, you know, uh, I'm gonna really just show everybody what magnificent prose I have, you know, and I'm gonna develop this and everybody's gonna love. Teddy just opens it up, starts typing, here it is. He writes like he talks. And, and that sounds simple, but Believe me, a lot of people don't do that, both in sports and outside of sports. Since the mid-1980s, he's piled up LSWA awards for papers like the Shreveport Journal, The Times, and The Times-Picayune. There, he first covered LSU and then began to step into a primary role as the paper's columnist. He returned to The Times as a featured columnist for Gannett's North Louisiana Papers for almost three decades. So most everybody knows that Teddy nicknamed Carl Malone the mailman back when they were in Louisiana Tech. 
but he also has a knack for nicknaming other people in his life, all his friends. In fact, tonight, tonight here we have Hooks and Chief and Rams. <laughs> but did you know that Teddy has a nickname of his own? And it was given to him by people who think they know his name, but really don't. I can't tell you the numbers of times that people have come up to him and said, Terry, Terry Allen. So he now, even with his friends, has embraced the name and goes by the nickname of Terry. In 2008, he joined his alma mater, Louisiana Tech, as a writer and editor in the university's communications department. And he has joined the Tech Sports Network as a football color analyst, host of coaches shows, and recently trying his hand at baseball play-by-play. -play. He is now the co-founder of an online publication called designatedwriters.com. Teddy has just uh, become one of our university's greatest ambassadors. He is a incredibly gifted writer. I think one of the great sports writers um, in Louisiana. Uh, he's also just such a talented speaker, a tremendous broadcaster. I mean, he, he's just enormously talented. And, and most of all, he is a um, faithful man of God. Um, you just can't say enough about uh, Teddy Allen, not just what he's meant to Louisiana Tech, but what he's meant to the state of Louisiana. Among his many honors include the AP Sports Editor's National Feature Writing Award and the LSWA Story, Columnist, and Sports Writer of the Year Awards. I think one of the first paid gigs you ever had was driving my car from Ruston to Baltimore when I was playing for the Baltimore Colts and I didn't have time to drive my car and get ready for training camp and my wife had three or four children trying to get them and so she flew, you drove the car. Thank you very much for back then if I didn't thank you then. But it's, it, it's been a lot of fun knowing you over the years. I've especially enjoyed your writings. I've enjoyed your books. I've enjoyed your color and commentary as a matter of fact. But what I enjoy most about you, Teddy Allen, is the way in your writings that you bring people to life. We've got to get him back to the microphone shortly for the rest of tonight's ceremony. But first, we need to give this multifaceted journalist the credit he so deserves. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's second Distinguished Service Award winner in sports journalism and Louisiana Sports Hall of Famer, Teddy Allen. No surprises here. We get to talk now. Okay. We'll chat a little bit. This is going to be short and not serious, <laughs> I would suppose. Thank you very much. Were you surprised when you got the call and the announcement? First time, uh, I guess, eligible for this? Did, where were you? What were you doing? And uh, well, um, I, wasn't, I figured it was about time for the performance-enhancing drugs to really kick in. I've been on them for 40 years now, and... <laughs> Nobody will test me at Tech. I keep asking to get tested, and they look at me and say, nah, you're, you're, not on, you're on something, but it's not PEDs. <laughs> so to be associated with this group, yes, it was a, it was a surprise and, and, and a tremendous honor for me. And now that I've met all of the class of 2022, even more so, and I want to commit to the class, you know, uh, that uh, I won't take this for granted. And they're a really special bunch. They're just golden to me after getting to know them this week. And, uh, and I want to try to be an upstanding member of Class of 2022. Was there a certain moment that turns you on to sports writing and all that you've done throughout your years? When I was a little, this is going to sound kind of bragging, but I was three or four, and I was doing things with idioms and subjective clauses that other toddlers just couldn't do, Victor. Uh, I mean, I'm splitting infinitives. I'm, you know, I read a story where Pete Maravich would lay up in bed and he'd flip basketballs, you know, up and down dribble one on the school. I did that with commas. I mean, I, there's no telling how many semicolons got lost to been our ceiling fan. And it was just, it, it's a gift, Victor. Uh, you, you really can't coach it. Another thing that happened to me was uh, when I was 10, I mean, I was raised in a little town, South Carolina. <laughs> I'm about to go just get a drink and let you interview yourself. <laughs> You're doing a heck of a job. I'm going to go hang out with the fine folks from Bunky in a little while and just listen yeah, to you. Yeah, they are. That's, uh... Save me a seat. I'll be there. <laughs> you go ahead, please. I, I, well, it, I, when I was 10, you asked me about was there a time, but uh, my, my town's like 750 people. It's over by Myrtle Beach 
and it's tobacco farmers and people like that. People, you know, it's honest, wonderful folk. But these, these guys, 25, 26, 27 years old, which are old to me, they took me to the Clemson, South Carolina game in Death Valley, about four hours away. That's pretty something for guys in their 20s to take a little 10-year-old kid with them. But we walked into the stadium. We stood in the end zone. It's enclosed now, of course, Death Valley is. But it wasn't then, so we stood up on the hill, and I'll just never forget it. Uh, all the colors and the sounds, you know, the roars, smells, popcorn, beer, I, I suppose. Uh, it was just fascinating. Tommy Suggs and the Gamecocks dope pop Clemson that day. And I'm sure I slept all the way home, but I have never forgotten it. We'd get the state newspaper, the Wake Forest, the Citadel, all those people would be in there on Sundays. And I, that's just, that bit me that day. I said, how could I possibly, I didn't know there were that many people in the world. Uh, so to be around that, I said, I guess this is happening all over the place, and uh, and, and gratefully found my way. Do you have a favorite uh, story or or style or, well, do you have a favorite story, comma style, comma, or subject that you like writing about the most? Um, no, I don't think so. I just try to pay attention to what you all do because I, I love writing ball, uh, but I was also asked to write you know, these other columns that keep stuff from being so depressing in the newspaper. Uh, somebody's always getting, you know, hurt or something's burning down. So the guy asked me, try to write some stuff that's, you know, funny or not so sad. And at the time, this was 30 years ago, I was covering LSU and the Saints. They were terrible. And I said, I hadn't written a happy story in three years. I'm down here covering this. <laughs> but he said, well, give it a shot. So I said, I, I would. And just on a light note, I, will, I told this story the other night, but I think y'all would think it was unusual. Uh, I mean, Super Bowl's great, and the, and, and the, the NBA Finals and All-Star Games, but, you know, Homer Hainsville's important, too, and Rustin Minden, it's real important. If you played on those teams, you're a grandma or something. So I was covering a high school game one night, really hot. Uh, the PA guy was, of course, drinking wobble water. He was about lit up come the third quarter. He was trying to pronounce the homecoming courts deal. He couldn't even see the little cattle, the, you know, convertibles riding around the – and uh, buddies kept coming up there and asking for drinks. And he went, it's real easy to cover the Final Four. It's difficult to cover high school games. You're not getting stats and stuff. So I'm swatting mosquitoes. I said, I'll go up there and sit with him. Well, in the third quarter, long story short, he started using the bathroom, number one, behind me. And that's awesome, except there wasn't any place to go back there. There wasn't a toilet or anything. It's equator hot. And uh, so I just had to bail. I said, I'll take the mosquitoes instead of this. But the funny part of that to me always seemed poetically that the game was waterproof against Wisner. <laughs> and you can't make it up. Only the sports gods can bless you with a little story like that. Like I said, That's you get these can... stories and much more at the Funny yeah. Bone next month in Richardson. Go by and see him. Uh, before I let you go, yeah. you said you always believe in sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Yeah, I do. I've just been so, I'm going to let a far scum like existence uh, up until tonight when this event started and we kept screwing up and my mother's here, my, my, my second my son and wife, and I was going to try to do good. But basically, I've, I've, it's, I've been gump-like. I mean, I was working at Beacon Gas in Clayburn Parish. When I was 19, and the literal sheriff of the parish came and picked me up and took me to Ruston and said, this is where you're going to go to school. I said, I don't think so. He said, yeah, this is, this is going to happen. And then from there, some people are in this room, some couldn't come have just been there to help me get from point A to B to C. And basically my job has just been to show up. So West Monroe and Tech is here tonight. My family, I could say, I got such dear friends that, uh, you know, I like to laugh and to hear y'all laugh. And these people make me laugh. Which I try to keep hanging around them. And I could say all their names. And they would sound like proper names, but they're, they're music to me. When I hear them in my head and, and poetry, and I just, I owe all of those folks so much. So. Uh, Thank you, and I'm going to try to make you proud and be a good member of the club. Well, we're proud to have you in here and be on a you – anybody else you want to say thank no, you? I'm good. No, y'all are awesome. Let's try to have some fun, and we'll see you again in a minute. Clap real loud, please. Ladies and gentlemen, Teddy Allen, there you go.
Teddy finishes his pictures. We'll take a quick time out, a commercial break. We'll be back with more of the induction for the class of 2022 at the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame here in Natchitoches. Thanks for being with us. We'll be right back. Some things in life smell delicious. Others, not so much. Like a gas leak. Propane, for instance, is naturally odorless. That's why we add strong odorants to alert you if there is a leak. So if you ever smell gas, turn your system off at the tank and call your propane dealer immediately. Propane is a safe and exceptional fuel, and we want to keep it that way. When you support, she soars. When you donate, he delivers. When you provide, they prevail. Since 1987, TAF members have lifted the minds, bodies, and spirits of LSU student-athletes, making sure they have what they need to succeed in competition, the classroom, and in life. When you give, they go. Hancock Whitney is community sensitive. They make a commitment to make a difference in communities like Fifth Ward. Home ownership is a gateway to financial freedom and ultimately better communities. We live in these communities, our kids go to school here, and we want to be a part of the success story. We encourage our families that it's not if they can buy a home, it's when they can buy a home. And so we're excited when the families have finally achieved that goal. I need something better. Better rates, better perks, and less drama. Sounds like you need a cashback credit card from La Capital. You'll score $150 when you spend $1,500 in the first 90 days. With no annual fee and unbeatable rates, you'll save more for the things you love. So what do you say? I'm saying bye to banks and hello to credit that works for me. Apply today. Call 800-522-2748 for details or visit hellolacap.com slash credit. The annual Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame induction ceremony is sponsored by the following State Farm Insurance Agents of Louisiana. Okay, welcome back everybody. Can y'all do us a favor? Ronnie Rance, of course, the president of the Hall of Fame Foundation started up here tonight. And then also Victor Howell, my man. Can y'all give those guys a big hand? They have really worked hard. And Ronnie's doing all kind of stuff back here. And Victor's got the hardest job tonight. So thank you guys. Um, the first competitive inductee tonight, he was a dentist but he also packed a punch. So let's all get to educated together on a story about our new friend, Dr. Eddie Flynn. The Hall would like to step back in time for our next inductee. 90 years ago to the 1932 Olympic Games in Los Angeles, boxing was in one of its big time eras. Some at colleges around South Louisiana, including Loyola, where he fought for the Wolfpack in the early 1930s under Hall of Famer Tad Gormley. Yeah, he's one of the most prominent athletes in Loyola's athletics history, and Loyola has a very good history of athletics, but to win a gold medal in the Olympics and to go undefeated as an amateur and to win other amateur titles, AAU, Golden Gloves, and such, he was extremely uh, successful. In fact, uh, he was so popular when he would his bouts at Loyola would draw large crowds to the arena and so he went to Loyola on a boxing scholarship so his boxing skill paid for his education but he gave back to Loyola indirectly because the money that was generated 
by his boxing matches, people coming to see him fight, really produced a significant amount of revenue for the athletic department. Born in New Orleans, Dr. Eddie Flynn was the national AAU champion in 1931 and 1932 and posted an amateur record of an astounding 144 victories and no defeats. And when he was a young um, amateur boxer, he, he hid the fact that he was boxing from his father. He was afraid that his father would make him stop because uh, he didn't want him to get hurt. He didn't think there was much of a future in it. So he hid it from him and he, he boxed under an alias. And then, uh, but his father found out about it at some point and finally told him okay, you can keep boxing, but if you lose, that's it. You're not putting the gloves on again. And he wound up going 144 and 0 as an amateur boxer. So uh, he never had to hang up the gloves before he was ready. In those Olympic games, in the 147 pound welterweight division, he won the gold medal, defeating a German fighter in the final. It would be 20 years until Americans won Olympic gold again. He also represented America in a series of boxing matches in New York with the European champions from Italy. It was there he defeated the fighter who was the, quote, crown of the foreign countries, end quote. Flynn won 23 professional fights until he entered military service for World War II. This boxer turned Tampa, Florida dentist passed away at the age of 73. He was part of the inaugural Loyola Athletics Hall of Fame class in 1964 and the Florida Sports Hall of Fame in 1974. He was also elected into the Greater New Orleans Sports Hall of Fame in 1981 and the Florida Boxing Hall of Fame in 2010. But his personality outside of the ring was very different than you might expect. You know, he once said one of the reasons he became an oral surgeon, which is where the Dr. Flynn part comes from, in his career he didn't like inflicting pain on people and hurting people. And that's why he retired after a pretty short professional career. So he went into a career where he could relieve people's pain. Tonight, he becomes the eighth with boxing connections to be inducted. It took a while, but he finally delivered the knockout punch to the hall's door. It is now open wide as we say, ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to Louisiana Sports Hall of Famer, the late Dr. Eddie Flynn. Mike check. All right, we're good. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Corey Martin. He's the great grandson of Dr. Eddie Flynn. Corey, it's great to have you here with us. How, how unique has it been as you were getting ready for this and knowing the induction to learn so much about your great grandfather and what he accomplished? Very unique. That honestly, that video was like getting me a little emotional. I was, I was joking with my wife earlier. <laughs> I was, my mom's a little bit of a hippie, so she doesn't travel, but. We were kind of telling her about the experience here, which has been just so beautiful, and she's tearing up on the phone, and that was just unbelievable. But for me, you know, personally, just very unique. You know, growing up, you always, you know, when your great-grandfather is an Olympic gold medalist, you, you, you know, you hear about it, you know about it. Um, but to dive in and, and really, you know, talk to all my family on that side, uh, my uncle, my aunts, and, and understand, you know, and I spoke on this on the lunch, who he was as a man, you know, really th that's what impacted me the most because, you know, when you look at obviously his athletic career, um, you know, his service to the country, uh, unbelievable. Um, but, you know, kind of just knowing, you know, again, I touched on this on lunch, but uh, on my mom's side, their, their father passed away at a very young age and he stepped in and uh, really was their father. So. Just a tremendous man, as, as you kind of kind of hit on a little bit, um, kind of oxymoronic, like you know, a boxer that became a dentist, right? right? Kind of bash people's skulls in, then we'll fix them up later. So, um, yeah, tremendous man. It was a really, really unique, um, just beautiful experience for myself. Obviously, yeah. he was very good to go 144 and 0. He actually went yeah, 147 oh, yeah. and 0. He won his first three pro bouts. And I went back and looked. I saw some old logins from from Loyola's yearbooks and some of the official boxing records. There were oftentimes he would fight twice, say, in the month of June, and then in the first 10 days of July. I mean, yeah. he kept oh, yeah. up quite a pace to get 144. A little, little different than today, right? Absolutely. I need like six months for training camp. No, like we were joking about earlier with some of the inductees, just 
140, you know, that it's unbelievable. Yeah. Just, just kind of thinking about what he went through. So yeah, it's been a tremendous experience for, for myself. My wife's here with me. Um, just beautiful for, for the family. And if you yeah. saw in the video, you might have seen real quick as it's focused on his picture on the bottom of an article that said that uh, Dennis Flynn won his debut. Eddie Flynn had his two brothers also boxing at Loyola. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Then he decides to get out, and I love reading the quote because of the way they spoke back then when he said, I, I just didn't like hitting a gentleman square in the face when I have nothing against him. Yeah. And so yeah. then, he, and then he went into dentistry, and you told me on the phone, you found out he wasn't being a dentist always for money. He, he bartered. Did you tell me yeah. food, yeah. animals? T tell us the story about what he did as a dentist. Yeah, so, so again, kind of touching on how, you know, who he was as a person. So... He would um, honestly provide services to, to anybody and everybody, uh, regardless if they had payment. He would trade fruit, chickens, do, you know, do it for free. He was just like an unbelievable soul, a uh, beautiful person. So just learning about that aspect kind of touched me uh, personally. Um, so it's just been a great experience for us. And how's the weekend you know? been for you seeing your great-grandfather honored and now being in the Hall of Fame? It, I kind of feel out of place, right? There's all these like unbelievable athletes here. I was joking with Kyle, Kyle, William, Kyle Williams is here. I was like, he's inflicted so much pain on my Dolphins. Fins up. I got you. So, um, you know, Jari Evans, we just, it's been unbelievable. Just a very humbling experience for me. Um, it, it's, it's been first class, so, so I can't say enough about, about the event. Well, with all that you've been doing to try to research, any thanks you want to hand out to the, to the committee, the hall, or anything as you've gone on this journey to get here tonight? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So I do want to shout out, obviously, to my... My wife, Erin, um, over there, she, she's, she's my rock. I'm going to kind of mirror earlier. So she kind of pushed me to, to come out here and represent the family. So, so I, I wouldn't do without that. We have three boys. So uh, Valor, Porter, Reeves, I hope one day they see this, right? So they're three, two, and four months, right? Everyone's like, how are you here? You know, how are you here alone? But, uh, yeah, we got some, you know, it, it is a village. Uh, so I uh, definitely want to thank my wife. Uh, shout out to my kids. Uh, I definitely want to touch on my uncle, Doug, who could not be here. He wanted to be here. Um, my grandfather was, great-grandfather was the most influential person in his life. So when he took over for the family. Um, so my uncle, Doug, I love you. I know you, you wanted to be here. I hope you're watching. Uh, my aunt, Sharon, my aunt, Colleen, my mom, Laura Lee, and my, uh, my dad, Lawton. So I want to definitely thank them. And obviously, Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. Thank you guys for voting them in. This is a tremendous honor. And if, if your tremendous boys, boys want to know why you were here, bring them back to a beautiful building here in Natchitoches. Oh, and they absolutely. Go see, Come they on, go baby. see Eddie Flynn's, Eddie Flynn's uh, assignment there, and they can see the display. Absolutely. Thank you. Congratulations for Eddie Flynn. Corey Martin, everybody, for Thanks, Dr. Guys. Eddie thank Flynn. You thank you so much, man. Martin, representing Dr. Eddie Flynn, ladies and gentlemen. Corey, thank you, sir. It's been fun having him and Aaron here with us. They came all the way from South Florida. Uh, so thank y'all. And speaking of traveling a long, long way, uh, I think Bert Jones, as Bert left, Bert brought Dr. Garrett tonight. He's gone, but y'all noticed him talking a little while ago on a video, and we did take a truck for him back to Baltimore. We were about 20 years old. He got traded to the Rams, gave us a credit card, didn't give us any cash. You'd have to know him. Uh, so we turned the car in, and the guy by the by Memorial Stadium, it was a man, he said, I've been doing this 40 years. He seemed like a neat gentleman working the parking deal uh, booth. And he said, so I said, well, thank you. Here's the keys. He said, well, didn't he give you a tip? And we didn't have, we're 20, we got no money. Uh, we're so hard up, we'll drive a truck across two time zones just to get a little pay. I said, no, sir, Bert didn't give us any money. He went, damn, Johnny Unitas never tipped either. No, he said, <laughs> I love that guy. Hey, my favorite Baptist used to be a LSU Tiger. And then once she left Texas and showed up in Baton Rouge, all of a sudden, a little bit of young softball team started showing up uh, at the Women's Softball College World Series. So please meet my friend, Brittany Sneed Newman. This evening, we welcome the first player from the LSU softball program to the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. 
and her resume is outstanding. Brittany Sneed Newman proved her success as a pitcher for then LSU coach Glenn Moore and a vet Gerard. And since leaving LSU, has shown her ability as a teacher of the game with Moore at Baylor. She was the talk of the recruiting world. There were some great pitchers at that time. She separated herself from a lot of those pitchers because of her demeanor probably. Uh, just never got rattled. Didn't get hit often, so there's not a lot of opportunities to get rattled. But I think that uh, probably what I saw in her at LSU was how she progressed each year. Each year she got better. Brittany put LSU softball on the map. She mowed down the SEC competition. She was truly as dominating a pitcher as there was. I'm sure she still owns some LSU softball records, some SEC records. You could count on her nightly to have double-digit strikeouts. How easy was my job to coach this young lady? As good as she was on the field, though, she was an even better person off the field, a truly spiritual woman. She has done a magnificent job of leading her team as a player and now as a coach. Sneed Newman was a two-time first-team All-America for the Tigers, a four-time first-team All-SEC selection, SEC Player of the Year in 2001, Pitcher of the Year in 2002, and SEC Tournament MVP in 2001 and 2002. I was recently asked the question, what makes Brittany Sneed Newman a Hall of Famer? First of all, it was her presence, hands down. Standing six foot something on a mound, 43 feet away from the batter's box, her stride was extremely intimidating. Not only was it her physical demeanor though, but it was also just the way she carried herself on the field. Absolutely stoic, couldn't figure out what was going on in her mind, and that alone was dangerous to the opposing hitters. She won 120 games over four years, losing just 25 with a 0 0.89 ERA, including 36 victories as a junior and 34 as a senior. We are showing a lot of strikeouts here to represent her 1,370 career Ks. More importantly, in Coach Gerard's first season at LSU, Sneed Newman helped the Tigers to a third place finish in the school's first Women's College World Series. She's the mother of two young sons who I hope trust these videos to show you how very good your mama was. And she could probably strike out all your buddy's baseball dad still to this day. She was an incredible talent that truly made the Tigers a force to be reckoned with in the softball world. For 19 years, Newman has developed some of the greatest pitchers in Baylor history, and many of those have joined their coach as first-team All-Americans. I know there are great pitching coaches out there. I certainly don't know all of them, uh, but I know many of them, and I've not seen one that is any better at what they do. Their demeanor, um, playing the role of being able to encourage uh, when they need to be in encouraged and push buttons when they need to uh, have those buttons pushed and then uh, developing them, giving them the information, being patient with them. She's much more patient than I am, and she's a tremendous pitch caller. This evening, Louisiana recognizes its fifth all-time softball inductee. All three players from college softball's modern era have been pitchers, and that probably is no surprise. This lady brought LSU to national prominence in the sport and she has imparted her wisdom as one of the top pitching coaches in the game. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Louisiana Sports Hall of Famer, Brittany Sneed Newman. Get a couple of things out of the way first. Happy early birthday. Thank you. June 30th. Yes, June 30th, June last th day of June. Yes, happy early birthday. <laughs> and uh, congratulations, Bowen. You're in the front. Where are you, Bowen? Bowen, right there. C congratulations. There's Bowen. So Bowen had a big game today, had a game this morning, got on his horse, made it over here, and you won, didn't you, Bowen? That's right. Congratulations. He even pitched big day, today. Huh? He had now, the ball in his hand, he pitched today, and he pitched well. Now, we have, to, we have to bring up Bowen because you have to tell me the story of how that good-looking young man right there humbled you when you got a tremendous phone call about being inducted in the Hall of Fame. I did. So what, one wonderful thing that I get to do is to be a mom. 
And we were at a birthday party, Bowen, my son, we were at a birthday party together. And I get a phone call from Coach Gerard and Ronnie. And um, uh, anyway, they're like, hey, we just want to let you know you're being inducted into the you know, Hall of Fame. And I'm like, what? No way. And I'm at this birthday party. And I'm sure they could hear the, the chaos going on in the back. And anyway, in the phone call. And I hadn't told anybody yet. And so I was like, wow, this is really exciting. Who do I tell? And I got to call people. And so I get in the car. The birthday party's over. And I'm like, I'm going to tell Bowen. He's, the, you know, the person I'm around right now. So I'll tell him. So I'm like, Bowen, guess what? Mommy got inducted into the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. And he goes, Mom, what's that? <laughs> so my moment of, of, of excitement and ready to tell people, and he humbled me right away. So um, children are, are wonderful, and they definitely humble us. Bring so. it right back down. Let's get live a party. Yes. Right, We've got to get back home and do but things. But he is very proud of me, so... I know that for sure. And should be. Uh, from Texas to Baton Rouge, what got you over to LSU when you when, during the recruiting? I know from the story, what I heard, A&M whiffed. That's their loss, their problem, yes. not yours. Yes. But, uh, so why eventually LSU? So there's a, there's a great man in the audience uh, named Glenn Moore, and he recruited me. I always thought that being a Texas native that I would stay in Texas and play somewhere in Texas. Um, but he pursued me and, and wrote me every day and wrote my family, my sister, um, and came on a visit, got me on a visit and fell in love with the vision for women's softball. I fell in love with um, just the support LSU gave to their athletes and the fans. I, I love the fan support and so I wanted to be a part of that. You told me several times on the phone how special this was, not only for you to be a part of this induction, but when it's happening, because you just celebrated 50 years of Title IX and what, why that means so much to you uh, with that celebration coinciding with this weekend. It's very exciting because it, it gave me an opportunity to play at the highest level that I could, uh, for a sport that I absolutely love. And I, I love it, I'm still doing it. Um, and I am just so thankful for the opportunity and the foundation that was laid so that women like me can, can do anything and can play any sport. And there's so many opportunities out there for our youth and our, and our girls and our women to play. And we have so many wonderful women athletes out there. And so it's exciting to see them compete and perform and win. So it's, it's exciting. And to continue opening those doors and give them even more opportunities. Hey, Bowen, you know how many no-hitters your mom threw? <laughs> Ten. Ten. Six as a senior. Can you believe that? No hitters are cool, aren't they? She threw 10 of them. Yeah. 10 career no hitters, six as a senior alone. How many of those do you remember? <laughs> Victor, I have to be honest with you. I don't remember one of them. I don't, I don't, I, I honestly, I don't remember one of them. I kind of wish that I did because that would be really kind of cool right now to talk about. But I don't remember one of them, but I do remember our team finally getting to go to the Women's College World Series. And I have a teammate here tonight that I remember us saying, come on, we've got to do this. We've got to get past Courtney Blades. We've got to get past her so we can win the Women's College World Series. And we did it, and we finally went. And that was my ultimate team, ultimate moment at LSU. And to get to the, to the College World Series, you have a, a, an excellent coach in Glenn Moore, who is now your coach still, and you're there at Baylor. But Glenn leaves Baton Rouge, and it was no small feat. And big news when Yvette Girard left Chafalaya across the basin and went to Baton Rouge. Now, earlier on the Walk of Legends, she said it was no small part that she knew you were in Baton Rouge because she didn't want to face you anymore and lose to you. She wanted to coach you. And then you go on to the College World Series. What did you take from playing under Yvette? that you're now trying to use as a coach today at the college level? I still use a bunch of principles and methods that Coach Gerard taught me. And I am forever grateful and thankful for what she did for me, but also I think now being a coach and um, understand even more so what she was trying to do in, in, in the athletes that were at LSU. And one thing in particular <clears throat> that I think is so amazing is as coaches, you know, we kind of have our philosophy, our way of doing things, and um, she always did such a good job of, of reaching each student athlete. Maybe it was a little bit different way. It wasn't, you know, one way or the highway type of, of, of philosophy, but she literally 
could motivate each individual person. And I, I've always thought that that was tremendous, but didn't truly understand the magnitude of the greatness until I became a coach. And uh, that's hard to do. And that's why she was a great coach. And so I love that. Well, it's great to see you using that influence. It is our honor to celebrate you tonight here. The floor is yours for if you'd like to thank anybody with your family and those along the way that got you here tonight. Yes, um, I have several um, people here tonight that I'd like to thank. We've got some good friends and family here. Uh, Blake and Sammy Harris are here, some friends from Waco. Uh, the Causey family, for sure. Thank you all for being here, driving all the way from Mississippi. Um, and then over here, I've got my family, my, uh, my husband, who's kind of been like my agent since I've found out about this. Um, he's truly helped to get everybody a ticket and kind of know where to go and be the communicator. So um, I just appreciate you so much in helping me uh, pull this off um, in, in the midst of our spring season, um, for sure. And then my mom and my dad are here, my biggest fans. Uh, encouraged me along the way, loved me um, through it all. So thank you. I'm glad that y'all are here. My sister is here as well. Thank you for being here. Um, also, I have an aunt and uncle that traveled here from Arkansas. Uh, thank y'all for being here. And then my in-laws, Brendan Roll Newman. Thank y'all for being here. Um, and then I've got a couple other people that I want to just thank. Again, Coach Gerard for being such an influence in my life, in my, co my coaching path. I just appreciate you. Um, Steph, my teammate is here, as y'all saw her up on the screen. Um, absolutely phenomenal person. I'm the lucky one that I get to, that I get to play with her. And uh, you truly sharpened me, so thank you. Um, and then over here, I have Coach Moore. Uh, Miss Janice, his wife, are here. Coach Moore, I still work with him at Baylor. Um, but Coach, just thank you for, um, we talk about Iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. Uh, it's a scripture in the Bible, and you truly sharpen me on the field. You sharpen me in my life um, as a Christian, and you truly taught me the game of life. And so, thank you so much. I'm so glad that you're here. Um, so, thank you all. I love you. Thank you for being here. Boys, if you want to see the best in the business, get on YouTube and watch video of your mom, and make sure you now introduce her. This is my Hall of Fame mom. Ladies and gentlemen, Brittany Sneed Newman. Congratulations. Brittany Sneed Newman, everyone. Thank you, Brittany. Yeah. We got a surprise with Brittany in just a little while. Uh, Brittany, if you're ever thinking about moving to Shreveport, we could use you on the Broadmoor Baptist Church softball team, I'm going to tell you. We'll work something out with your tithe. Just, we just need you. Okay. Thank you. Hey, we, this next video could be 30 minutes easily. It could be a documentary and you would have enjoyed it. We made it three minutes. It's about a man who was the all-time winningest baseball coach in college baseball in state history. But more than that is what he did to create value in humans and to invest in them. So please enjoy this story of Coach Tony Rubishuk. How does one begin to classify the greatness of a man and a baseball coach whose life was shockingly ended so suddenly in 2019. Do you remember him as a championship coach, a mentor who made you better, a friend who lent a hand, or just a person who immensely cared? He was the most principled man I've ever known, and his principles weren't negotiable. If you were a, a player and you stepped out of line, there were consequences. Now, he was always willing to give a second chance, but he wasn't going to deviate, not only as a baseball coach, but as a man. Talk to any players, they'll tell you how consistent he was throughout his career when it came to dealing with players. There is something to all of that when it comes to Tony Robichaud. Through a head coaching career that spanned 30 plus years at McNeese State University and the University of Louisiana at Lafayette, 
Robichaux won a state record 1,177 games. What I love most about Coach was his personality and his his wit, and, and he was funny, and he was a master storyteller. He could laugh, and he could laugh at himself. Well, that's what drew me to him, and then always had a piece of knowledge for you or a quote or a, a piece of advice or some wisdom, and it, it always seemed to fit the situation. He took the Cowboys to two NCAA regionals and the Cajuns to a dozen, along with four Super Regionals and a third place at the 2000 College World Series. But as great a coach as he was, those who knew him uniformly say he was a better man in so many ways. He has the famous quote saying that baseball is what he does, it's not who he is. And for him, there were no more truer words spoken because baseball is not who he was. It was strictly something that he did as a profession but who he was was much greater than that. It was father figured to all of these young men that played for us. It was a mentor to all the coaches that coached underneath him. It was all of those things that made Tony who he was. The impact made was illustrated when former players exclusively raised nearly $200,000 to erect a statue in his honor prior to the 2020 season. He did a really good job of putting into perspective, you know, obviously baseball was important to all of us, but like at the end of the day, it, you know, it was just a game. And, and he, he put life in the forefront for us. And at least, you know, for me personally, like really shed some light on the perspective of the game versus your life and kind of purpose and stuff like that. His presence needs to be felt for all time uh, at the school in particular for every player that runs through that baseball field. Uh, and they need to learn about him and hear about him and, um, and, and listen to his message because it was so impactful for all of us that, um, you know, that, that's, that's the effect that a true mentor does. It's, it's life standing. Uh, it lives with you forever. And we, we felt compelled to put something together that will stand the test of time and will be here forever um, because you know, it'd be selfish of us to try to keep his teachings and his message just within us. It's, you know, we, we, need, to, we need to let everyone know who, who this man was. The Hall recognizes outstanding athletic accomplishments. And for many coaches, that involves wins and losses. Right or wrong, that's what gets people in many of those venues. But tonight, this Hall of Fame salutes a coach who taught the game and was a longtime success, but also someone who delivered life lessons freely and made so many so much better. They are carrying on this legacy to this day and for years into the future. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to Louisiana Sports Hall of Famer, the late Tony Robichaux. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Justin Robichaux, Tony's son, also currently softball coach at UL of Lafayette. Welcome and congratulations to you and your family. Thank you. And for your dad. Um, we, when we talked on the phone earlier this week, you said you've got the unique perspective of Tony as, as a dad, and then as a coach, and then as a mentor that you're now coaching. How have you taken everything from those three perspectives since his passing and what it's meant to you from your perspective? Well, you know, it's unique. I mean, you know, when he started, I mean, he's he was 24 years old. I mean, that's kind of unheard of in today's game to be a Division One coach at the age of 24 years old. And, um, you know, to, to his wife, Colleen, I mean, you know, us growing up in, in like Charles, Louisiana, I mean, uh, he'll tell you, I think they got their, you know, electricity cut off more times than, than he wanted or they wanted, you know. Um, and, and the sacrifices that came with it along the way, I mean, you know, back then, I think he was making, you know, nine, ten thousand dollars and my mom was a public school teacher and, you know, putting two kids through education and uh, to see that firsthand as a as a child growing up, um, the grind, the, the the amount of sacrifice it took, the every day just, you know, going to work every day for something that you believe in, um, to playing for him, um, on the back end getting an opportunity to be mentored by him and 
um, seeing the humility of servant leadership. Uh, and I think that's the, the, the biggest impact that's had in you know, my life and, and you know, hopefully I can give that back um, to a young woman that's, that's throwing a softball. We saw in the video, and you don't need people in the video to tell you that if you knew Tony about what kind of man he was um, off the diamond, you said he was a pack rat, that he would maybe go to the other dugout, see something that he liked, and take a picture of it, or, or take it off the wall and, and hold on to it. Was that his way of constantly learning and figuring out how I could take maybe something you have, but I interpret it differently, and then teach it to others? Yeah, he had a, he had a way of, of, you know, taking very difficult information and putting it in like a kind of like a poetic philosophical way they, they would call them robisms and you know me and my brother and my sister knew that as kind of how he communicated to us which was you know fun and interesting at times uh, it was great when we, when we had the opportunity to play for him but you know just to give you an example in 2007 you know coach Matt Deggs is in attendance tonight um, you know I was a freshman on that team and I think he had he was initiating the pack system um, with Texas A&M and you know he, he would take the stuff off the bulletin board you know um, to when we had the opportunity to put the book together um, we went through boxes and boxes and boxes of all his stuff and it was like liquid gold man just old school clip art stuff that he would put in these binders for the players and um, it, it, you could see how much it, it meant to him and how much effort he went to to impact somebody else man um, was the cool part. Speaking of the book, the book is entitled The Real Game, Overcoming Life's Personal and Professional Challenges. I highly recommend you look it up on Amazon, order one for a tremendous read. Um, you put this book together uh, after your dad's death, and you, you were telling me that uh, he used to preach to players and to people something about a phrase called the real game, and you were trying to find a summary to, to really bring this book around, and then it came down to the box. And we talked about this on the Walk of Legends. Legends. This is sort of a goosebump inspiring story when you told me on the phone. But share with you, if you don't mind, how you came across the box and how it brought everything full circle. Yeah, absolutely. I think you kind of met me. If you listen to Brittany talk about, you know, Yvette and her, and her college coach, he was, he was a, like a transformational type of guy. I mean, he didn't really seek a transaction from you um, as a player. Um, he wanted to grow you and mentor you and move you forward and you know he used the the terminology the real game overcoming life's personal and professional challenges which we didn't even know that that was going to be a title for the book and all uh, I think a good book starts with the title and uh, when he passed away we got contacted by the guys that he was working with um, and then he, I think the second chapter in the book is called seven lies of the sport and the 13 hurdles uh, of life, which he had kind of uh, finished some of that. But we listened to the fa uh, Father Sibley's homily uh, more times than we probably should have. And then me, my brother, and my sister sat in his office, you know, going through boxes and stuff, trying to figure out, you know, what do we call this thing? What do we call this thing? And uh, we had a lot of questions. Um, and then uh, we went through every box, or what we thought was every box, and then you know, after looking up and asking some, some kind of, uh, I guess, pissed off prayers, you would call them. Sure. Um, you know, we see a box over in the distance, and uh, we, uh, it was that last box we never, just never went through. And sure enough, we opened it up, and man, I'm, I'm telling you, every question was in his own handwriting, like, written down. It's pretty cool. And able to put the box together, uh, put the book together, and then you see what he meant to so many on the field by the fact of the former players, as we saw in the video with the statue. So you know, we know your dad will always be remembered. But to see that, I'm sure that touched everybody. To see how how he was in everybody's heart for those he coached to want to do that for him. Yeah, and I think you would you you hear it, and and every time they have the opportunity to speak, you you hear two things. You know, his his commitment to his consistency of who he was as an individual, who he was as a mentor, um, and his, I guess his, his, his road to, to mastering his craft was, there's a story I'll, I'll, I'll leave you with on this, is we're playing Middle Tennessee, and I'm a sophomore at the time, and um, it's two o'clock in the morning, and I get a phone call on, on my old school flip phone, you know, and uh, answer it, and it's him. And it's 2 o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, uh, hello? 
and he goes, hey, I need you to come up to my room. And I'm like, do you, do you realize it's 2 o'clock in the morning? Usually it's the other way around, you know? Um, so I head up to his room, and, and he's laying there with a laptop up, propped up on his, on his stomach. And, uh, and he goes, I need you to put this in the, the DVD player for me. Um, but he wasn't very technology inclined, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> sure. Um, so sure enough, I push the side button and, and, and prop it in, and I got a chance to look at the top of the DVD, and it was uh, John C. Maxwell's 21 Essential Laws of Leadership at 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, his resiliency and, and constant perfectionistic approach to just bettering himself is, is something that I'll always respect, and I think that's what you saw from his players. Well, you will certainly carry on his wonderful legacy, you and, and the family. This is your opportunity to thank those that mean the most. Yeah, I'll start with his, his mentors. Number one, you know, uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He, he would tell you today he wouldn't be here without him. Number two, uh, his wife, Colleen, she, she's the rock. I mean, when they started at McNeese, it was, it was a grind to clean in bathrooms, to, uh, you know, building a program with your bare hands, to uh, his family, um, my brother, Austin, uh, his daughter, Ashley, um, her husband, Lon, um, Austin's wife, Sarah, my wife, Leanne, um, to his former presidents and his uh, current president, Dr. Savoy, um, to his former ADs, current AD, Dr. Maggard, who's in attendance tonight. Um, can't get there without great staff and great coaches. Um, to all his former uh, or his past you know, coaching staff, uh, to the guys that were there at the end, Coach Babs in attendance tonight. And, and there's, there's a guy in here that, man, took over a program after, after a you know, they would call him a legend passing away, and Coach Matt Dex is in attendance tonight. You know, very thankful for him and his family and everything that they've done. Um, to his mother and father, uh, Ray and Sylvia, his brothers, and uh, to everybody that had an impact along the way, the fan base from McNeese and UL, to everybody here, to Ronnie and Doug, and everything that you guys do on a, on a regular basis, man, thank you. It's a, it's a, you know, I get to bring my kids back here, which is going to be pretty cool. Um, and and I, I would say, lastly, to the state of Louisiana, and I think you would close it out, something like this, you know. Um, thank you for giving, you know, a son of a butcher from Crowley 30 years in, in something that he loved to do. Um, thank you. Well, we know his legacy will always live on in Lafayette, and now for the state of Louisiana. Ladies and gentlemen, Justin Robichaud on behalf of head coach, Tony Robichaud. Thank you. I was going to say welcome back to the event center, but we didn't go to break, so I'll just say hi is everybody. Hey, uh, do you need a juice box or anything? Jar, are you good? Kyle, need a banana, orange slice, something? Okay. Y'all are going to be up here in a minute, so hydrate for me. We don't want to lose anybody. Um, we need to th the videos that have been running tonight. Our friend Chris LeCock has worked hard all week on them. Will y'all give him a big hand, please? Thank you, Chris, of all the events we've been to. Hey, a lot of folks, you'll find them to be, you can call them, uh, no, you know, all hat, no horse, but not this next inductee, I can assure you. It's a real delight to introduce to you Steve Duhon. Okay, let's be honest here. Was this hall close to inducting three LSU linemen tonight? Well, maybe not, but there's a football story to be told about this rodeo hero. It seems at Belmont Academy in Opelousas, Steve Duhon in 1980 remarkably rushed for more than 3,300 yards and had 148 tackles. 
colleges suddenly got interested, including a late-on-the-scene LSU coaching staff. Duhon showed up at LSU, and as someone who had been wrestling steers since he was a kid, football was a piece of cake. But after a freshman year in football, in which he played every game in 1981, his love for leaving the chute and taking down steers was too strong. Well, anyone that rodeoed at that time can tell you how great a cowboy that Steve Duhon was. Steve was not just a bulldogger. He won three world championships the steer wrestling, but he could rope, he could, he could steer rope, he could team rope. He was in the time event championship, and anybody could tell you about how great he is at, at being a cowboy. But also, Steve was one of the most gifted athletes that I'd ever been around. Steve was a great athlete. He was a world-class athlete. He could have wore a, a Super Bowl championship ring just as easy as he wears the three uh, world rodeo buckles that he has. I think the quality that makes Steve the great athlete that he's always been is his competitive nature. As long as I've known Steve, um, he enjoys competition and he plays to win. I've seen Steve in foot races, in rodeo events, I've seen him play football, and no matter what he's doing, he wants to win. I've seen him in horseshoe matches, I've seen him bowl, and he approaches all those things with the same intensity. He likes competition and he likes to win. He turned professional and began to win and win and win some more. It qualified him for the famed National Finals Rodeo eight times, and he captured the World Championship in 1986, 1987, and 1993. Along the way to his 1986 title, he established an NFR world record run of 3.0 seconds. That mark stood for 15 years. I tell people that Steve has ice water in his veins. Uh, the, the more the pressure, the better he likes it. Uh, he made most of his fame and fortune in the Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association as a steer wrestler. But I can assure you, there are a lot of people in other events, for example, the calf roping and the team roping, who are glad that he didn't hone in on that e those events because he was just as tough and just as skilled and, and just as athletic in those events as well. Steve Duhon is one of the greatest steer wrestlers of all time. He had all the great qualities of a great champion. Speed, athleticism, ability, agility, horsemanship. He was a great friendly rival. I think we pushed each other to be better. What a great testament to you and your family, Steve. Congratulations, proud to be your friend. What a well-deserved honor. There's something about tackling football players and wrestling steers that seems to have a lot of similarity. But there's no question why tonight the Hall of Fame inducts its second world champion cowboy. He knew what he enjoyed doing, and he put in the work to make himself a superstar. He's already in the Pro Rodeo and the National Cowboy Hall of Fame. And now it's our turn to say welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, Louisiana Sports Hall of Famer, Steve Duhon. better believe you'll be Mr. Duhon in this interview. You better believe it. So you, you grow up in the country, football is an option, LSU calls. You gonna go to LSU for football, what the family say? Oh, my dad's eyes lit up. He, he was as competitive as I was. Uh, they wanted to see me, so we planned a visit. He couldn't, because he worked all the time. My mom and I drove to LSU. Jerry Stovall let us in and Bishop Harris first one we seen was Leonard Marshall you know tackle for goes on wins the Super Bowl but probably 6'8 290 and I thought is he on defense they said yeah I said what position they said tackle I said I think I can play here <laughs> so you go <laughs> so you go to LSU you're there for a year and then you tell the family you know what I don't think this is it I'm gonna go jump on top of steer and drag him to the ground so uh, football was fun but for a whole year, I didn't have to wear a pair of jeans. <laughs> uh, I developed a tan even wearing shorts around. And I, I realized I was just a little too small then to play the game. 
Uh, I got hurt playing it a couple times, broke a shoulder my freshman year. And at the end of the year, realized, you know, I had a different road I could go. God, God blessed me with a lot of abilities, and he blessed me with the parents that give me a chance to do it all. And you certainly proved to do it well. You said you're a goal-setting type of gentleman. You wanted to set up the goal out to be Rookie of the Year, but you started halfway through that year, and you still wound up winning Rookie of the Year. How, what made you think you could do it when you'd already missed half a season, and how did you make that goal come to fruition? Uh, they have amateur rodeos, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama all together. And I won that association three years in a row. And uh, for my birthday, some guys said, you ought to come to a jackpot in Shreveport, Louisiana. And all the pro guys were there, and I placed at it. And what they'd have was head-to-head -head matches. Me and one guy, we run the same four steers. And that guy had just come from the national finals, had set the record of 3.1 the year before. And they bet a lot of money on him. And here I come, LSU football player. Oh, he don't know nothing. And I ended up beating the guy. We made a bunch of money. Uh, I left on my birthday, May 27th. Met some uh, traveling buddies then. Four, four of us from Louisiana, Jeff and Gary Green and Bob Bonzel. We took off rodeoing for the rest of the year. They had been rodeoing. And I went rookie of the year and ended up 18th for the year overall. Fantastic. And I asked you on the phone earlier this week about traveling other places in the country. I told you I did some growing up in Dallas. I used to go to the Mesquite Rodeo and asked you if you had been out there. And you said yes. And you told me a story about Louisiana pride when it comes to you and traveling the country for rodeo, specifically in Las Vegas. Why don't you share that story? Uh, first time got to Las Vegas to have the grand entry before the rodeo. They introduce all the cowboys riding right a horseback. Uh, each state go alphabetically. High money winner from each state gets to carry the flag. So I was, first year there, I was a high money winner from Louisiana, which I think we had a calf roper and a bull rider. Uh, everybody was riding in, just kind of holding the flags. When they said, Louisiana, come on in with Steve Duon carrying it. I made a lap just running as fast as I could a horseback and I went to waving the flag. And they approached me, they said, you can't wave the flag into the stands. I said, Louisiana people don't do a lot of things they're not supposed to. <laughs> and who's going to stop you, right? Yeah, exactly. What are, what are they going to do, take you off the horse? Yeah, they're not going to stop you. Um, rodeo is, is, is so niche, but certainly alive and well. If anybody's watching this, they see you, they watch your video, they're from the country, they think, you know what, I, I like rodeo, I want to pursue it. How do, you, how do you tell them about it today to, to try to follow in your footsteps? It's... It's come a long way. They're making a lot of money, a lot of sponsors, uh, a lot of time in the practice pen. We, if we were during the summer, wasn't doing anything, me and my brother were in the practice pen every day. Heat of the day, afternoon, uh, and we worked at it. We, we said, okay, you, you run this last year. You got 4.5 seconds to win it for the world championship. You know, we're 15 and he's 20. And we're practicing like that. So I, I'd been practicing for that all my life. And when I got the chance to do it in, in Las Vegas, I was ready for it. Well, that's great. Certainly you had the pride of Louisiana and Vegas. Louisiana, very proud of you now in the Hall of Fame. This is your opportunity to pass along any thanks and appreciation for those that helped you get to where you are tonight. Oh, thank God. Like I said, he blessed me with a lot of abilities, do a lot of stuff. But his best deal was he blessed me with parents who helped me do everything. My dad and my mom were there for me, supplied me with horses, helped me go. My brother took me by the hand. He drove me to a lot of rodeos. Uh, my family, I got to relive it all again. All my kids rodeoed. Uh, grandkids are starting to ride and do stuff now. Uh, my wife, thanks for being there. We just, it's one big family deal. Now I get to do it all over again, but I'm on the other side. Well, you've represented Louisiana very well, and we're honored to have you in the Sports Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Steve Duhon. And as Steve has this opportunity to take pictures, we're going to take a quick time out. For those of you joining us on television, we'll be back with more as we continue with the induction ceremony for the class of 2022 here in Natchitoches right after this. 
there's a place where you can celebrate Louisiana cuisine and festivals of fun and childlike magic. There's a place to discover 300-year-old history, yet modern exhibits are around the corner. There's a place to explore Creole plantations behind every bend. So come celebrate, discover, and explore Natchitoches, Louisiana's oldest city. For more information, visit Natchitoches.com or call 1-800-259-1714. Natchitoches Parish is a special place. For generations, its people have built their lives on family and the community they love. Its people pull together to make Natchitoches Regional Medical Center what it is today, offering advanced specialties like heart care, lung care, and other life-saving treatments. Its people appreciate getting care close to home from a medical center they trust. Natchitoches Regional Medical Center, inspiring excellence every day. Some things in life smell delicious. Others, not so much. Like a gas leak. Propane, for instance, is naturally odorless. That's why we add strong odorants to alert you if there is a leak. So if you ever smell gas, turn your system off at the tank and call your propane dealer immediately. Propane is a safe and exceptional fuel, and we want to keep it that way. Natchitoches Parish is a special place. For generations, its people have built their lives on family and the community they love. Its people pull together to make Natchitoches Regional Medical Center what it is today, offering advanced specialties like heart care, lung care, and other life-saving treatments. Its people appreciate getting care close to home from a medical center they trust. Natchitoches Regional Medical Center, inspiring excellence every day. The annual Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame induction ceremony is sponsored by the following State Farm Insurance Agents of Louisiana. Hello, I'm Raymond Parch III, LSWA President, and I'd like to officially welcome you to the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame 2022 induction ceremony here in downtown Natchitoches. It's been a crazy couple of years for our organization and for the Sports Hall of Fame. Two years ago, we weren't even able to have this weekend due to the pandemic. Last year, we pulled off having this weekend not once but twice in a three-month span. And as the president of the organization, I can proudly state, not only did we achieve that and pull it off wonderfully, we also learned a lot from that experience. With us, the LSWA, we pride ourselves on putting together these Hall of Fame classes year after year. The discussions are spirited, would be a nice way of describing that, but we take it serious. It's something we all, when we sit down in that room every year to put together the class, we may argue, we may disagree, but we know how important it is to put together the next year's induction class from Heisman Trophy winners to NBA World Champions to Olympians. Our Hall of Fame represents all sports and all kinds here in our great state of Louisiana. While you're here this weekend, I'd be remiss not to remind you to stop by the museum. It's state of the art right there on Front Street. You're gonna enjoy yourself, whether it's your first time or your fifth, you're gonna find something new in our Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. From all of us here with the Louisiana Sports Writers Association, thank you for being here. Congratulations to our inductees and have a tremendous weekend. Hey, welcome back to the Special Event Center here in Natchitoches. I'm joined by Stephanie Hastings, a teammate of Brittany's. Also, Brooks is a good man. He is the offspring of this All-American. And let's all stand if we would. We're in the home stretch of this event. We're gonna sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Can you stand, please? 
when we get to the part where it goes root, root, root for the home team, just go root, root, root for, and then name your team. You ready? Need to sing. This is Louisiana. One, two, three. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jacks. I don't care if I ever get back. Come on, guys. Let's go. I need to get stretched out a minute. Thank you, Steve Duhon. If Steve had brought his pony, it could be like a party. Steve Duhon had a horse. I asked him what his favorite horse was, and it was a horse named Scooter. He had a pot belly and didn't look like much. But he said, Me and a couple of my buddies won, I think, four world titles on him. And it just says that you can't gauge from the outside what the competitive heart is inside and that says a lot about our next inductee speaking of competitive hearts seven or eight years after eric Andelsek left lsu the guys coaches and players and writers who covered him said they still talked about him in hushed tones if somebody said his name to some of these new guys it was like a mythical person like talking about santa claus but there was no myth he was real and we're going to share his story with you now Life was much too short for Eric Andelsek, who was in the prime of his career as a starting guard with the Detroit Lions when he left us too soon in 1992. But in his short life, he established himself as one of the top offensive linemen at Thibodeau High, LSU, and the NFL. More than anything, he became a hero in Lafouche Parish as one of its own who had humble, big-time success. What was it like playing with Big E when he lined up next to me? I felt like we couldn't get beat. We were just gonna beat everybody we played against. It was his extra effort and his tenacious drive to compete against himself that made him a better football player. He really was always trying to get better. A lot of times people go through practice just trying to survive, not Eric, whether it was the weight room or on the Ponderosa, he was always trying to get better. He would even yell at guys that were scout teamers that were going against them if they didn't uh, play hard. So he'd drive them, pile drive them if they didn't play hard, practice hard. He was named to Prep All-America in 1983, and as a three-year starter at LSU, was named All-SEC, All-American, and a member of LSU's modern-day team of the century. By the time he left Baton Rouge, the Sporting News had him listed as the college game's fourth best offensive lineman. He was a great guy off the field, would do anything to help you, always laughing, having a good time. But once he stepped on the field, look out, because he was the most feared player on our team by his peers and then our opponents. He was relentless. He was not only scary, but he was always looking to beat somebody, to knock them down between the whistles. So the legacy for us is that we were always glad that he was on our side. Andelsek was a fifth round selection of the Lions in 1988 and was a starter his final three seasons, blocking for one of the NFL's greatest players in Barry Sanders. Andelsek helped the Lions win the NFC Central and advanced to the NFC Championship game in 1992. There's not a day that goes by that I don't think about Eric Andelsek. Eric was a friend of mine and a teammate. When I think about Eric, I think one thing, he, he might have been the nicest guy in the world. I really mean that. I love being around him. His energy was infectious. He was one of the toughest guys that I ever played against. Eric and I lived together uh, our rookie year. We shared the ups and downs of rookies. And if I had a choice and I thought about it, there'd be no other person that I would share that time with an Eric Andelsick. Was he special? Absolutely. When he put that football helmet on, he was vicious. When he had the helmet off, he was a gentle giant. The legacy that I think about with Eric Andelsick was very simple. When the Detroit Lions came in for his funeral, 
It was a very touching day. It was a very humbling day. One of the coaches came up and said, Eric was a special person. He was a giver. And he said something I'll never forget. When you give, it grows. When you save, it dies. Eric was a giver. Eric, everything on and off the football field, Eric touched everybody's lives. And that was very, very special. And I miss him very much. Even 30 years after his passing, he remains a South Louisiana legend. Tonight, the Hall of Fame recognizes that his time was special and needs to be forever remembered. Ladies and gentlemen, Louisiana Sports Hall of Famer, the late Eric Andelsek. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Andy Andelsek. It's Eric's brother who's accepting on his behalf tonight. It's great to see you. Congratulations to you and the family. And know the good Lord and Eric are looking down on this because we're two days removed from the 30-year anniversary of his death. And you told me earlier, 30 years to the day when you laid him to rest. And now we get to celebrate him forever at the Sports Hall of Fame. Yep. Uh, I sure don't want to screw up because I know he's watching. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> you, heard, you heard John Hazard. He was spot on. So. You, you heard everybody describe how fierce he was on the field, and you told me that he was just some guy who just always wanted to work out. What drove him to always pursue that sort of attitude on the field to be as successful as he was? Well, he started off at a young age, he was very competitive. Uh, Eric did not like to lose in anything. And the, most of the people who are receiving uh, in, or inductees tonight, they talked about the same thing. They were very competitive. So, a um, very young age, uh, he grew up with a, myself, a five years older, and my sister were older than him. Um, you know, he did not like losing in anything, whether it be jacks or playing football in the front yard. So, you know, it just pushed him to work harder. Uh, he, he started training, you know, when he was young, and he really was dedicated to training and continued to do that uh, through his life. And even when he was at Thibodeau High, or, or, or when he was a freshman at LSU, he always thought he wasn't good enough. And that just pushed him and pushed him and pushed him, and he trained even harder and harder. As a young man growing up in Thibodeau, was LSU always his destination? Was that his number one goal, or were you all barraged with offers and visits from all sorts of schools? It's amazing. We, you know, we, I live next door to my parents, and you, every afternoon if you walked over, you had a college coach sitting in the living room or eating ball crawfish or, you know, the, the constant uh, coaches coming in. Uh, Eric, uh, you know, he, he had considered other schools, and in fact, uh, he was torn between LSU and Alabama. Uh, a lot of LSU fans might not want to hear that, um, but he was, and I was scared that he was going to go to Alabama, and he, he'd ask me, well, you know, what you think? I said, look, Eric, you got to make that call, That's, you know, and you got to live with it, but, you, you know, if I had to tell you, you know where I, I want you. But uh, he made the right choice. He <laughs> stayed home. Uh, and, you know, we love him for it. It was great that everybody could follow him, and, uh, and that's what kind of made him uh, a legacy in Thibodeau. I mean, if he would have went off to school somewhere else, uh, and maybe he wouldn't have been what he is, because, uh, you know, earlier I mentioned just going to the grocery store, you run into somebody, and they always have an Eric story for you that, you know, he did this for me, or, you know, and it's, a lot of times it's not about football, you know, uh, whether it be uh, he's helped change a flat tire or what it, what it would be. Uh, you, everybody in Thibodeau still remembers it. And, and you told me that he's as fierce as he was on the field. He was a teddy bear off the field. We heard guys talk about it in the video. You were telling me he rarely wanted to call and talk about football at home. You said he was always more about the family, and he tried to come home a lot, and rarely did he talk about that. How did he separate his fierceness and success on the field with being so soft-hearted off of it? That's a good question, but he did. Uh, like, he'd call when he was playing for the Lions, and, you know, I'd say, man, you know, wanted to talk about the game, and he said, no, 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 I don't want to talk about the game. You know, how are, you, how are your children? How, you know, how, what's going on at the house? You know, uh, just questions about home. So, uh, you know, he... he he had a home in Thibodeau, and as soon as he could, when the season was over, he came back to Thibodeau. And uh, he, like 
we mentioned earlier. He was out in the front yard weed whacking grass when he when he had the accident. Um, but you know, he, that's what he'd have been doing today if he'd still been alive. I mean, he, he was coming back home and he loved home. He loved the lifestyle in Louisiana and the people in Louisiana. We know the career he had at LSU. Certainly he was on a, a nothing but straight up trajectory in the NFL in his career. Did he ever talk to you or the family about life after football, whenever that might have been? I'm not saying he was going to tell you when he was going to retire, but did he ever mention about what he might want to do when he decided to hang the cleats up? I really don't know what he wanted to do, but he did want to stay home. He did mention to me, uh, he asked me uh, once that he said, you think I could get some land and be a sugarcane farmer? You know, um, you know, I have cousins and uncles that do that, and uh, I said, Eric, you can do what you want. <laughs> you know, I'm sure you, you, you know, your bankroll will be big enough. So, uh, but uh, yeah, he, he, I mean, he loved fishing, he loved golf, and he loved people. Uh, he loved spending time uh, back at home. Well, on behalf of Eric tonight, Andy, any, any thank yous you'd like to hand out or signs of appreciation now that your brother has been inducted into the Hall of Fame? Well, I'm doing this on Eric's behalf, uh, you know, like the late, great Dr. Eddie Flynn and uh, legendary coach Robichaux's families. Um, you know, I, I, I can't recall all of Eric's coaches' names, but first and foremost, uh, I'm sure he would start off by thanking his parents, my late mother Jackie, uh, his, uh, and my dad Lou, uh, and then all of his coaches and trainers that he uh, learned from and taught him through his years. Uh, also all the teammates that he played with. There are some LSU and high school players that are here. Thank you all for coming. Uh, I got a lot of friends that came here. Uh, thank you all as well, and a lot of family. Uh, you know, my sister Renee's here, and her family's here, and my children are here. And uh, they were all young when Eric passed away, again, 30 years ago. Um, but they all, they all know the uh, legacy that he left behind. Oh, you didn't have to be nervous. Eric's looking down, and you did just fine. And so many people have an Eric Andelsack story. Now everybody can share his story in the Hall of Fame. Thanks for being here to share some of that with him. Congratulations. Thank you so to you much. And the Look, I do want to thank one last person, Brent St. Germain, for putting Eric up and pushing him for all these years. Uh, we really appreciate what he did. Well, congratulations to you. Andy Andelsack, everybody, for the late Eric Andelsack. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to hang with Andy and Renee all week in their beautiful family, and we're glad that they could be here with us. Thank you. Hey, Gold Star Trophies in Baton Rouge are doing our trophies this year. Kevin Dupuy is in charge of these things and makes them, and we don't know how he does it. That's not the actual size. That is actually the actual size of our next inductee who is the cartwheeling Susan Jackson but the real ones are a little shorter than that but it's gold star trophies in Baton Rouge and we appreciate their support now this stick of dynamite rolled into Baton Rouge a while back came in from Texas and when she did then losing uh, LSU gymnastics just exploded so i hope you enjoy your time with susan jackson right now as much as we've enjoyed our time with her this weekend when susan action jackson began a routine on a gymnastics apparatus for the lsu tigers the sports beauty its grace and its talent were on full display and with that came consistent winning that made her a record-setting performer. They asked me to do a video for you, and I was honored and surprised. I'm up at a small lake, cleaner lake up in Michigan, and I, you know I was very busy, but I dropped everything I was doing to do this video for you. They want a short story about you. There is no short story about Susan Jackson. Everything she did was grand and enthusiastic and had a championship flair to it. And you know, Susan, from the very beginning, we didn't really have to coach you. We guided you, we gave you suggestions, but you were the total package when you arrived. I'm gonna throw the real credit to Bob Moore because vaulting was your best event, 
and that's where he really created a champion. You were a champion on balance beam, but that was your natural victory. Jackson won the school's first NCAA all-around title in 2010 with a four-event score on the vault, bars, beams, and floor of 39.625 out of a possible score of 40. She also won the NCAA individual title in the vault in 2008 and the always treacherous beam in 2010. She is the all-time LSU leader in individual national titles. When I think of Susan Jackson, I think about a terrific individual. I think about a terrific teammate. I think about a caring individual, and I think about a tough individual. She was a champion in every sense of the word. She took life as she found it, and she made something out of it. She is truly one in a million, and the kind of kid that I'm proud to have been able to be a part of her career. Jackson became the second LSU female at the time to win the Roy Kramer SEC Athlete of the Year Award and was second all-time at LSU with 12 career All-America honors. She won the 2010 Corbett Award for the top female amateur athlete in Louisiana and became the first LSU gymnast to win the Honda Award as the nation's best gymnast. Just as impressive in her senior season of 2010 was winning 11 all-around meet titles. She and I worked at this coaching thing more as a partnership than more like the traditional athlete and coach. We, we worked together, we were honest with each other, and you know, I can't take credit for anything because the greatness was already there. I just had the good fortune of being able to help her to relax and to reach out and to get her potential. In all, she captured 74 crowns in her four-year career, 19 on vault, 14 on bars, 13 on beam, and 12 on floor exercise, and 16 all-around honors. I am so proud of you, and I'm so proud of what you accomplished, and I'm proud of what you have become. So you keep being you, and go Tigers. In 2019, this Spring Texas native was elected to the LSU Athletics Hall of Fame. And tonight, her record has dazzled even the most critical judges on this selection committee. She's a perfect 10 for our hall, becoming the third from the gymnastics world to ascend this stage. Ladies and gentlemen, Louisiana Sports Hall of Famer, Susan Jackson. I was making sure that microphone's for you. I was making sure I left the path clear. I didn't know what you were going to show with next. I wanted to make Listen, sure to get trampled it, it there. it felt a little stuffy earlier. Oh, we just no. need a little bit of excitement. Best entrance ever. <laughs> um, so we're watching all the videos. We see all your success at LSU. It's time to go to college. You decide, I am going to go be an LSU Tiger. Sight unseen. Explain that. Yeah, a lot of people are interested to know that I actually never visited LSU before I committed. Um, I think it was very early in the recruiting process that I knew LSU was for me. I bonded quickly with the coaches, um, and I loved the fact that they cared for me as Susan, not just the gymnast. Uh, I also Googled LSU on, uh, in typing class my junior year and saw that it was a quick one hour drive from New Orleans, and uh, that didn't hurt their case either. No. 74 titles in your career when you talk about all around individuals and as we heard there with Lynn, the Honda Award for the best in the nation. Is there any one that stands out to you that you remember reaching that accomplishment? Yeah, so in the SEC it's very, very hard. I think anytime you beat Alabama, it's a good day. <laughs> but um, I think the one that really stands out is getting to the Super Six for the first time. Didi had been trying for years and years to get there and to finally be the team that got that gorilla off her back, it was, uh, it was a pretty cool feeling. So let's, let's stick with that for a second with Didi because one of the unique things I find with this class is so many that are going in that help build foundations. You certainly helped build a foundation that Didi was, uh, was building. We talked about Brittany and softball, what Glenn had, and then when Yvette came over in building the foundations. 
your memories of working with with DD and and how you keep an eye on the program to this day and what you see because if you're not from Baton Rouge and you're watching LSU gymnastics might be the hardest ticket to get I know Tiger Stadium in football seats 100,000 good luck trying to take a family with girls to go see LSU gymnastics unless you know somebody it is a hard ticket. It's to a get. hard ticket Even to get. Even for me, if somebody in the audience can help me figure that one out, um, you know, when I can get a ticket, sitting in a in a sold out PMAC with the fire and the and the music and the T-shirts flying, it's a, it's a very cool feeling. As far as Dee Dee, you asked, uh, you know, she demanded a lot, as did Bob, my coach as well. They demanded a lot. They demanded a lot in in the gym, but more importantly, they demanded a lot in the classroom and in the community. Um, but I feel very proud kind of seeing what the program has become today. And I hope to have left some kind of legacy, uh, whether it be I was a good teammate or maybe a hard worker and I got through some adversity and that I was good in the community. Or 74 career titles. I think you left quite a, quite a legacy. Uh, it's very unique having you up here tonight, but this is not your first rodeo with the Sports Hall of Fame. You have a unique relationship with, with this night and this event, don't you? I do. So I came to my first ever Hall of Fame weekend when Dee Dee was getting inducted five years ago. And I kind of fell in love with the weekend and just felt very inspired by all the inductees and their stories. Inspired enough to reach out to Ronnie Rance, who's the president of the Hall of Fame. Uh, rookie mistake, because from then on out it was, hey, Suze, uh, I got a golf tournament in New Orleans tomorrow. You're playing to, uh, hey, I need you to be at this event tonight. Wear a cocktail dress and some badass sneakers. <laughs> My favorite was I get a phone call from Ronnie, and it's, hey, the talk show that I'm on, the caller didn't call in. You're on air in 30 seconds. You know, so, you know, but I've been here for the past five years, a lot of events. It's really cool to be here finally as an inductee. I'll say, so I asked that to ask this. You getting a phone call from Ronnie Rance isn't all that abnormal and you do things. So where were you and what were you doing when the phone rang and you're thinking, uh-oh, they need me on the air or something, but then you find out that this is going to be your night. It was exactly like that. I was at home after work just doing monotonous things and I get a call from Ronnie. I answer it, and he's like, hey, let me patch Doug Ireland through. So I, I like get on Facebook, and I'm scrolling through the Hall of Fame Facebook to see what event could be tonight that he needs me at. Justin Vincent, I know you're shaking your head out there somewhere. And so I'm scrolling through, and I'm distracted, but Doug Ireland comes on, and he's like, hey, if we do a poker tournament, would you be there? I don't play poker, but I said, hell yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> uh, and then Doug Ireland started laughing and told me the real reason for the call, and... Here I am. Well, and here you are, and congratulations. This is your opportunity after such a wonderful career now that you will be enshrined in the Hall of Fame that you'd like to say some thank yous. I drank a glass of wine, and I'm only 4'11", so it hits me a little differently. So uh, I don't want to forget. <laughs> First, to the Hall of Fame. Uh, it's been a, a wonderful weekend getting to know my fellow inductees and their families. Congratulations to the rest of you. It's a pretty star-studded class, and I'm honored to be a part of it. To my family and friends who are here, Kelly, with a Y, <laughs> just kidding, <laughs> from California. My cousin Taylor from D.C. Um, the Pattons from Texas, from Houston. Family from Austin, Lafayette, and my family walk watching back home. Uh, thank you all. I love you, and I appreciate you so much. To my mom and dad and my siblings, thank you for everything. I would not be here tonight without your love and your support and all of the sacrifices that you made. This one is for the five of us, the Jackson Five. Thank you to my husband, who's here. He actually played football at Cornell, uh, but he now bleeds purple and gold and has become very, very shockingly good at scoring gymnastics meets. So thank you for jumping in head first and being passionate about my passions. Love you. And finally, to thank you for LSU Athletics. Thank you to my coaches, Dee Dee and Bob, who are here tonight. I know that I was hard to work with, but uh, thank you for your patience. <laughs> thank you for bringing me to Louisiana and making sure that we were embedded in this culture. You taught us how to catch redfish and peel crawfish and you know, made sure that we were inspired to go down to New Orleans on a Saturday night and 
party. Just kidding, that never happened. Uh, and also thanks to the state of Louisiana. You know, if you know Texans, you know that we are very, very proud to be from Texas. And freshman year, I always said, you can take me out of Texas, but you will never take the Texas out of me. And I was very wrong in saying that because Louisiana is half of me now. 411, full of fire, and now Hall of Famer. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Susan Jackson, congratulations. As Susan has her moment with the photographer, we'll take one final time out. Three more inductions to go as we round out the class of 2022. We'll be right back here in Natchitoches. Thanks for joining us tonight for the induction ceremony. I need something better. Better rates, better perks, and less drama. Sounds like you need a cashback credit card from La Capital. You'll score $150 when you spend $1,500 in the first 90 days. With no annual fee and unbeatable rates, you'll save more for the things you love. So what do you say? I'm saying bye to banks and hello to credit that works for me. Apply today. Call 800-522-2748 for details or visit hellolacap.com slash credit. Some things in life smell delicious. Others, not so much. Like a gas leak. Propane, for instance, is naturally odorless. That's why we add strong odorants to alert you if there is a leak. So if you ever smell gas, turn your system off at the tank and call your propane dealer immediately. Propane is a safe and exceptional fuel, and we want to keep it that way. There's a place where you can celebrate Louisiana cuisine and festivals of fun and childlike magic. There's a place to discover 300-year-old history, yet modern exhibits are around the corner. There's a place to explore Creole plantations behind every bend. So come celebrate, discover, and explore Natchitoches, Louisiana's oldest city. For more information, visit Natchitoches.com or call 1-800-259-1714. Hancock Whitney is community sensitive. They make a commitment to make a difference in communities like Fifth Ward. Home ownership is a gateway to financial freedom and ultimately better communities. We live in these communities, our kids go to school here, and we want to be a part of the success story. We encourage our families that it's not if they can buy a home, it's when they can buy a home. And so we're excited when the families have finally achieved that goal. When you support, she soars. When you donate, he delivers. When you provide, 
they prevail. Since 1987, TAF members have lifted the minds, bodies, and spirits of LSU student athletes, making sure they have what they need to succeed in competition, the classroom, and in life. When you give, they go. The annual Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame induction ceremony is sponsored by the following State Farm Insurance Agents of Louisiana. The 2022 Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame induction ceremony is brought to you by State Farm Agents of Louisiana, Rapids Regional Medical Center, La Capital Federal Credit Union, LA Propane Dealers, City of Natchitoches, Hancock Whitney Bank, Tiger Athletic Foundation, Northwestern State University, Natchitoches Regional Medical Center, and the New Orleans Saints. Okay, for the last time this evening, welcome back to the Natchitoches Event Center. Thanks for hanging around. Did we ask you at the first of the night if anyone was here for the first time? Could you raise your hand if you're here for the first time? A lot of you might have started. Anybody here for the last time? <laughs> it's all hanging there with us. Thanks for being here. Thanks if you join us on streaming. We appreciate it. Also, thank you to Lynn uh, Rollins, the voice of the Hall of Fame, who was doing the sound overs for the voiceovers for the videos, and also thanks to Senator Gerald Boudreau and Raymond Parsh III over here. If y'all would give them a hand, our Gerald, our Hall of Famer, and RP3, our LSWA president. And finally, thank y'all for singing a little while ago. Brittany and Stephanie and Brooks, appreciate it. I thought y'all were outstanding. It wasn't, uh, I mean, it's faced, it wasn't cool in the gang, but it, it, was not, it was not bad for late on a, Saturday night. So, do we have any hoodats in here anywhere? Oh, we do. Good. Well, one of the best to ever wear the black and gold. We're going to introduce him to you now, and that would be the golden Jari Evans. For Jari Evans and his offensive line teammates for the New Orleans Saints had one extremely important job: block for one of the game's best quarterbacks in Drew Brees. They must have done a very good job because, one, Breeze and the Saints were big winners, including in the Super Bowl, and two, Evans had a stellar career that included multiple honors for one of the NFL's top interior linemen. But the one thing you never questioned was his toughness, his physicality, and probably till this day might be the best player I've coached as far as finishing, meaning he's going to the echo of the whistle. He is always going to be when that when that whistle is blown. He's going to he's going to work to be in that leverage point where he's won the block, all right. When that ball is thrown downfield or the runner breaks it downfield, he is going to run as hard as he can to try to protect the ball carrier, whether it's a receiver or whether it's a, a runner. So that stuff I've always found in my career, is you can make someone a little bit better, but never make them elite. I've always felt that Jari was elite at that at that skill. Six Pro Bowls. Four All-Pro teams are on his resume with 169 starts for the Saints at right guard. He was drafted by Sean Payton in 2006 from Division II Bloomsburg University of Pennsylvania. How did the Saints find him? Talent? Scouting? Luck? When you have a guy as talented with the work ethic that Ja had, he probably would have been successful anywhere, but you certainly have to credit scouting. And I, I think I understand this more as a coach who goes through this process, it's hard to take a guy from a small school and say, hey, I can identify that guy's going to be good in the National Football League. I think the thing with Ja Ri is there's certain things that you learn that you love. You love physicality, you love toughness, you love a guy that finishes. You like to see a guy who you know 
mentally is going to be a dog for you on the field as an offensive lineman, and Jari always had that. When the tape came on Jari, it kind of came in like on a horse and buggy, and you had one copy of it, and and we wanted to hold on to that tape, thinking that no one else in the league might might have the same copy because we saw what good uh, what a good football player he was. His reward for his success in helping the Saints to the Super Bowl was the Saints making Evans the highest paid guard in NFL history with a seven-year, $56 million deal. They got their money's worth. And this is the thing that to this day I love about Ja. Ja's immensely positive all the time. Ja never found the bad in the situations. He always found the good. Um, and so, you know, that certainly helped me. Now, in terms of this Hall of Fame, Right, this is now the second Hall of Fame that I'm taking, partaking in uh, inducting Jari into uh, the Saints Hall of Fame, now the Louisiana Hall of Fame, and there's a big one left. And I expect uh, one day to be included in that presentation as well, because I think it's inevitable and it's the right thing if we all see Jari Evans inducted into the National Football Hall of Fame eventually. Um, I think he's that good of a player, and I think he was that impactful to the Saints organization. Tonight, this man joins another pretty good Saints lineman named Willie Rofe in this hall. As Zach said, he's twice helped honor his line colleague in the Saints and the Louisiana Halls. The big hall in Canton knows where to find you, Zach, when the time comes to bring this guy to a ceremony at Tom Benson Stadium. But tonight, here in Natchitoches, Saints fans are ready to celebrate another player, taking a rightful spot in our museum. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Louisiana Sports Hall of Famer, Jari Evans. Good to get to talk to you in person. Usually I'm in the studio, don't have a chance to see. So it's great to see you. Congratulations. Not bad for a guy who didn't play football till uh, high school, huh? <laughs> Coming yeah. out like this. Were you playing anything before uh, you start, picked up football in high school? Yeah, actually, uh, I was talking to the baseball, you know, families here. I played baseball. I actually had a scholarship to play baseball in Connecticut for high school, but uh, I think I chose the right sport. I think, <laughs> I think you, made a, you made a very good choice. You're up in Philly, and you certainly gave so much to the city of New Orleans, but I understand the city of New Orleans gave back to you because you're from Philly, or up in the Philly area. Your wife from that area, but you met in New Orleans? We did, we did. Um, yeah, we met in New Orleans. Quite, she's from West Philly, I'm from North Philly, and, and we met in New Orleans. It, it, it's, it's wild, but yeah, we did. I don't know how we didn't meet in Philly, but, <laughs> <laughs> but we met in New Orleans. Some of us are old enough to remember that uh, the blackout deadline was 12 noon on Thursday. And if the tickets weren't sold, you didn't get to watch your Saints game. And thanks to Shoe Town and Pizza Hut, who picked up anywhere from five to eight, 9,000 tickets, fans could watch Saints games. 06 rolls around. Sean Payton, Drew Brees, Jari Evans. You all changed the expectations that now live today with this Saints team. And now there's a tremendous waiting list to get into the Dome. So take me back to 06. When you all came in with Payton in that class, when did you realize, boy, we have put together something special? Well, you know, they, uh, they, re they really ran us through the mill, man. I mean, we were probably the longest team in training camp that year, just with everything going on. Uh, we actually played a preseason game at Jackson State University. But, um, you know, we knew we had a, a tough group of guys. There was a lot of guys from all different, you know, places, a lot of free agents. And uh, we put together a pretty good group, you know, that year to go to the NFC Championship in 06. And that's where we kind of, you know, had that grit, had that toughness, and, and that's where it all started. And then coaches just start adding different things to the team, adding different players, different concepts. And, um, you know, we, we were really a, a big running team in 06. And, um, and then once, you know, Drew and, and, and the rest of the guys got along, we, we became a, a dynamic passing team. And, and we just put those things together and uh, made magic happen. I was fortunate to cover your team in Miami at the Super Bowl, and I know your offensive line, I apologize, I don't remember the name of the award, but you all got the best yeah. offensive lineman award. I remember seeing all of you there to get that tremendous trophy, which speaks so highly because as talented as Drew Brees is, he needs somebody up front to protect him. We know he's short-statured, right, but we know he's deadly accurate. When you look back on your career and working, what was it like being up front with everybody you worked with, knowing that nine was behind you? Yeah, you know, he, um, it, was the, uh, it was the Madden Prolisec Award. 
we won it twice. Um, I don't know why they even stopped doing that award. It was a great award to honor the O line. But uh, but yeah, you know, Drew, he he always took care of us as offensive linemen. I mean, end of the year gifts, uh, Panera watches, like you know you know, always took care of us. But, you know, Drew was really a general. You know, I used to try to get in the building. Our meetings were at 8. I would try to get in the building like 7, 7.15, get in the hot tub stretch. And Drew was always, you know, you walk past, you know, the, when you enter the door, you walk past the quarterback room. He's in there watching film. You know, Drew really, he'll beat you on Wednesday. <laughs> if he could beat you on Monday after the game, he would. So, you know, I think a lot of guys kind of took that leadership off the field and knew that, you know, we, we didn't want to let each other down. If we can be the best prepared prior to the game, then we can execute when it came game time. Yeah, well, certainly you all made it to where that offense was so deadly and so potent, and you all certainly deserve so much credit for making it happen there on the front line. When you look back on your career in the black and gold, I know Drew said at one point, he was on, on one of my shows, I was blessed to have him on there as a guest, and he said, well, if, you know, and he said it when he retired, you love the city of New Orleans, I love you back. Um, when you think back on your career, what do you think about when you went into that dome and it was 72,000, loud, nobody wants to come play you there because they're afraid of it? Uh, just what that meant to you when you took the field, knowing that that's what was going to greet you every Sunday at home? Um, it was, uh, you know, it was pure energy. You know, I was coming from Bloomsburg. Where I probably played in like 5,000 people or something like that. And, and to get in the dome, you know, it was just pure energy. Uh, we, we fed off the crowd. You know, you really fed off the crowd going to the hotel the night before. You know, New Orleans knows how to party. Um, games were at noon, so people were up early in the morning, ready to go. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you know, the Dome is, is a place that everybody in the NFL does not like to play. And a lot of players across the league has always made it known, you know, you know, the Dome was, was a big advantage for us, especially on offense. The defensive players didn't like it that much because <laughs> it was loud when they was on the field. So they, they got a lot of hand signals and they, their communication was a little bit different. But for us as offensive players, we, we could count on a few penalties every week because of the, the fans in the Dome. Well, you go small college to Super Bowl. You go Saints Hall of Fame now to the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. Jari, your opportunity to say thanks to whoever you'd like to that's been along on this outstanding journey for you. Yeah, it's, it's been an awesome journey. Uh, first, uh, definitely want to thank my wife. Um, you know, she has uh, more letters after her name than in her name. <laughs> and uh, hopefully this time next year, I don't want to put too much pressure on her. She's working to get her doctor's degree, and um, that's awesome, just supporting her and her careers after mine. Uh, my mother, who's here, who's, who's from Carroll, Georgia, quite frankly, you know, ironically, I'll go to the Saints and, and hate <laughs> the Falcons, but we got a lot of family in Georgia as always. Yeah, that's right. We got a lot of family in Georgia that, that always, you know, supported me throughout my career. Um, my, my kinfolk, EJ, he was actually, he, you know, he was my host recruit when I went to Bloomsburg. Um, he's actually from Shreveport, and he went to visit his family before coming here, and glad to have hear, him here tonight. He always reminds me that he wished that I was blocking for him in college. He would have a few thousand more yards, uh, but <laughs> he was a grad student when I got there. But, yeah, you know, getting to this level is just so many people that, that um, got to help you along the way, you know, from coaching to teachers to family. Um, and I, I had that support, you know, from Philadelphia to Bloomsburg to even in Louisiana. Um, so it's just so many people to thank. I've had some great coaches along my career. I didn't play till high school, like you said, and, and all those coaches have a, have a hand and an imprint on my game and, and so many great players. You know, we really lift up the, all the teams I played for as offensive line. We really lift up each other, you know, during the game. And, um, yeah, so just thanking all my family and friends. It's been an awesome ride. And, and who that? I know you've got businesses in Philly. You're on the radio there, but keep representing the black and gold. Thank you. Up thank there. you. We'll do. Who that, we'll baby? Do. Jari Evans. Congratulations, Jari. Congratulations to Jari, go Saints. Way to go, my man. This has been, uh, he's pretty much been my muscle all week, keeping people off. A lot of people want me to sign their typewriter and their laptops, and it got kind of out of hand. So him and our next inductee kind of guarded me. I appreciate it, guys. Uh, uh, yeah. Our next inductee is good-hearted. He's funny. He's such a good natural athlete, it just aggravates people like me so much. 
but on the football field, he was just absolutely ferocious. And arguably, he's the best defensive tackle to ever come out of the greater Sibley, Louisiana area. You can decide for yourself. Let's meet Kyle Williams. You've heard about an outstanding offensive lineman who went from high school to LSU to the NFL. Now let's switch to the defensive side and Kyle Williams, a Ruston High star who also went to LSU and a lengthy career in the NFL. One of the nation's most coveted defensive line prospects in high school, Coach Nick Saban was able to get the state's defensive MVP to Baton Rouge to join his rising LSU program. I was fortunate enough to be the defensive coordinator at LSU when we recruited Kyle Williams out of Ruston, Louisiana. Unbelievable athlete, uh, helped us win a national championship at LSU in 2003. Threw the shot put it in high school. Great baseball player, little known fact, he's an outstanding golfer as well. Uh, but you, sh you watched his high school tape, you saw his motor, you, you saw how hard he played and how important it was for him to be an elite player. Came to our campus at LSU uh, in Baton Rouge and then you saw his block recognition uh, again, you saw his motor, you saw his leadership ability and all the intangible qualities that he possessed and, and had an unbelievable career there at LSU. And then you go on to 13 years with the Buffalo Bills and, and what he accomplished in the National Football League. You know, it's my honor to congratulate you, Kyle, on your induction to the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. Congratulations. Williams took over as a starter at defensive tackle midway through the first 2003 season on a team that won the BCS National Championship, beating Oklahoma in the Sugar Bowl. Williams in 46 games at LSU, posted 16 and a half sacks with 26 tackles for loss. He earned second team All-America honors in his senior season of 2005 a fifth round pick of the Buffalo Bills. Williams became a star in his 13 NFL campaigns, making the Pro Bowl six times and becoming a favorite of the Bills Mafia by the time he retired in 2018. He finished with 48 and a half sacks for the Bills, starting 178 games. He was inducted into the Greater Buffalo Sports Hall of Fame last year. Hello, Kyle. Congratulations on the great honor of being inducted into the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. Outstanding achievements here in Buffalo. You did a great job in leading our team. Obviously a terrific player on the field, but to be honored in your home state, I don't know if it gets any better, Cal. You are most deserving. You're a tremendous person, outstanding athlete, and we look forward to watching you continue to be a role model for others, both at the collegiate level, the high school level, and for sure at the professional level. Thank you, Kyle, for your years of service, and congratulations. I uh, just wanted to say congratulations to Kyle Williams on this great honor of being inducted into the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. Super happy for you, Kyle, super happy for your family. Uh, Jill, I hope you don't cry that crying face that you cried when Kyle retired. A, B, Kyle, I hope you smile a little bit tonight and enjoy the moment that you've earned and uh, congrats to everyone in the Williams family. Williams, in the article in the Hall of Fame program, said, quote, I was going to try to be my best and be the best teammate I could be every day and see where that would take me, end quote. Well, the Hall of Fame committee thought his everyday best was very good indeed. Tonight, he joins an exclusive group of all-time first ballot inductees. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Louisiana Sports Hall of Famer, Kyle Williams. I got to share a quick story with you. I'm, uh, I'm fortunate enough to do Saints game day and Saints tonight. So my Sundays, I'm down in the TV studio. I'll start getting text messages. Did Buffalo win today? My, my oldest daughter, yeah, I looked at the score and I get a smiley face. And then the next week, did Buffalo win today? And I said, no, they lost and a frowny face. So I finally, why are you asking me about Buffalo? No, no offense, but why are you asking me about Buffalo? She says, well, the Bills Mafia is at my school. So, okay, what does that mean? Sam, when Buffalo loses, boy, on Monday, our gym teacher just makes us run and run and run. He's in a bad mood. I said, well, who's your gym teacher? When I found out, it's your brother-in-law. So you never know where you're going to find that Bill's Mafia. You had an effect all the way down in Louisiana, pal. E education at its finest. That's right. That's right. 
She was so happy when y'all won, but when you lost, they knew it was going to be, they knew it was going to be a, a, a long Monday. So you're coaching, and we're going to go back to that topic in just a second. But I understand, were you game planning uh, and working when you got the phone call about tonight, and then you, you kind of put the call on the back burner? Is that what happened? <laughs> I was. I, I haven't had the opportunity to properly apologize to Doug when he called me. Uh, we were in a staff meeting, a game planning meeting, getting ready to play uh, Karen Crow for those f familiar with their football program and what they've done and uh, what we're trying to accomplish with our kids. Uh, so I was able to slip out of the field house, take a quick call, uh, and very abruptly end it and run back in before my before my boss who's here and I'm not even sure he knew about me sneaking that call in during our game plan meetings. Uh, maybe that's why we had to score 40 points on offense to win, but we did. You were a Nick Saban recruit when you went to Baton Rouge in the late 90s, of course, Jerry Donato was there, the program started to decline. Nick comes in and you're a recruit there. Uh, was LSU always your destination being from North Louisiana? You know, I, I probably grew up thinking I was going to be uh, Mark McGuire, Jose Canseco, one of these guys. And uh, as I started going through the recruiting process, I had a lot of great schools that recruited me, uh, that I had the opportunity to visit. But I can tell you, you know, it's really a deal breaker. You're, you're sitting in your living room and, and Nick Saban and uh, Pete Jenkins are there. And, and Nick's giving you the what for. You know, he's, hey, hey we've offered you a scholarship. We're going to be really good. Wherever you go, we're going to beat you. And like, what's your problem? And that, that, that's an issue. But the bigger issue is your mom sitting over your shoulder, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you listening? Yeah. And, you know, uh, luckily, luckily, Coach Saban and my mom uh, knew something that I didn't know. Um, and I think that's where all roads were pointing anyway, uh, but it just ended up working out. Well, you certainly proved to be good, and you win the first national title for LSU in, what, in almost 50 years. And much like I just talked about with Jari, with the foundation, with the Saints, you and your crew and your class started to set the level of expectations for LSU a lot higher. And they still, they're still there to this day. When you reflect back on that national championship and what you did, what do you think about? I've been asked that question a couple of times this week, and... Outside of the talent, you know, at the time we had no idea what, what really that word means, but you look back and you, had, you see all the guys that played years in the NFL, multiple years, multiple teams. But when I look back on those teams or, or, or that group of guys that was there that handful of years together, I reflect back on how competitive everybody was. Um, you know, it was at the beginning of the age of all these stars, how many recruits you are, however all that goes now. But it didn't matter on those teams that were there together, whether you came in and you were a three-star guy from Mississippi or a four-star guy from Monroe or five-star from this. Everybody was cut out of the same competitive cloth. And if you had the... Um, privilege to go to one of our practices then, our practices day in and day out were bloodletting between our offense and our defenses. It was just so fiercely competitive uh, that it forced you to rise to the top. And if you did not uh, compete and rise to the top, you were going to get left behind. I remember them being nonstop as well. There were very, very little, if any, breaks. There were long days, yes. long days back yeah. then, yeah. So you have an outstanding career in Buffalo with the Bills, and congratulations on the induction in their Hall of Fame as well. But I want to go back to what I mentioned at the top. You're now coaching. So you have an outstanding high school career. You go to LSU, you lead them to a national championship, a tremendous NFL career. And now it's come full circle, because now you find yourself coaching young men in high school again. What, what have you learned through this journey that maybe you're now implementing now that you're a coach? Well, the only reason I'm coaching is because of the impact that Coach has had on me. And, and really, uh, there's a handful of them here tonight, and, I, and I'd like to highlight them. And, you know, first of all, I have a, my junior high coach is here who ends up being my best friend's dad at the same time. But, you know, from him, I can, uh, on the drop of a hat, I could tell you who discovered the Mississippi is DeSoto, who was a teacher. And, you know, uh, free throws win ball games. So to me, you know, uh, I haven't made many free throws uh, since the seventh or eighth grade, uh, but it spoke to me that like little things matter, the small things happen uh, because you, you focus on those things. My high school defensive coordinator is here, uh, who's the only person I've ever had that held my attention in a history lesson, the way somebody could catch me getting ready on a game plan to play football. Uh, my head high school coach is here and 
I think back on him and I think about toughness and consistency and all about the team and, and really just tried to take all of those things and know the, uh, the thousands of kids that they've affected over the course of their careers, me being one of them. And obviously I mentioned uh, our head coach at Ruston who's here now. Uh, it's my privilege to work with him every day to um, develop young people and then win some football games on the back end of that. Well, certainly we know how much the coaches mean to you, Kyle. Any other thank yous and appreciations you'd like to give now that you're officially into the Hall of Fame? Well, I would say that, uh, you know, my athletic career started on uh, Old Country Road in uh, the greater Sibley area, like Teddy pointed out. And uh, it's really started because of my mom and dad. And uh, I know they were way too tired, but they were never too busy. Uh, to go out and throw the ball again with me or, or push me around to do this or take me to another practice. Um, you know, Steve mentioned his parents who gave him the ability to do lots of things. Uh, it, it was either between swim meets or baseball games or football games or, or if it was just getting in the yard and sweating and bumping around with me. Uh, those were my first coaches and laid the foundation for me. Uh, I have a lot of friends and family that are here and I can promise you that uh, everywhere that I went, Although you may not have been mentioned in name, um, it was very, very important to me to represent you well. Um, the Myers family, uh, Chad, Scott, Whitney, Lee, Travis, Mr. Bill, Miss Christy, that's my in-laws. Uh, Miss Christy, I want you to know when Rock and Doopsy sang that Alan Toussaint song about mother-in-laws last night, I did not dance one step. <laughs> I, I did not do anything inappropriate. Um, you know, you guys have always, uh, always been there for me through um, my marriage and are, you know, allowed me to date your daughter. Um, and uh, obviously my kids, uh, the, one of the, probably the greatest moment of my career is uh, making a victory lap around the field in Buffalo and having the opportunity to thank the fans. And everybody got to see that, but that's not really the high. The high was the opportunity I had to go into a secluded room with my family afterwards and tell my kids that the reason we got to experience what we did today is because every day I made a commitment to be my best, to do my best, and that's why we got to experience this weekend, guys. And then uh, last, but sh maybe not shortest, her and Susan would have to go back to back. I like to call her the little general. Um, a lot of things about my career, people talked about the hallmarks of my career was uh, toughness and effort. Um, when I hitched my wagon to your star, Jill, took off. You're the toughest person I know. Um, standing in operating rooms, moving every six months, raising five kids. You're a monster. You're the beast. I appreciate you. Thank you. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, Kyle Williams. They love him in Buffalo and in Baton Rouge and in Sibley and in Ruston. Thank you, sir. Very good, good job, Fred. You bet. Okay. Yeah, you can clap for him. He's really very, very he's got a few Pro Bowls. You deserve that. Um, Kyle, I forgot to mess. He mentioned his mother. Where did your mother play outside linebacker? Was it University of Houston? I can't remember. Somewhere. She's tough. Hey, we're at our last uh, inductee of the evening, and he's got a lot of support here tonight. He's come a long way from the greater Mamou area. You could take 14, the LSHA could take 14 of his state championship trophies back, and the guy would still have 50. It's hard to believe, but we'll show you how that's done it, how that's done. Check out Clanny. There have been some amazing high school coaches inducted into this Hall of Fame over the years, and we are proud to induct another tonight in Clanny Duplichin.
When it comes to his accomplishments in track and field and cross country, there are very few anywhere that can match up. First, the longevity. 47 years in coaching. 44 at Episcopal High in Baton Rouge. Duplashen has 64 LHSAA state titles to his credit, ranking sixth nationally in all sports, according to Max Preps. His boys' cross country team had a consecutive championship winning streak of 25 years, one of the longest in the nation. Clanny and I first started working together at Catholic High more than 40 years ago. He was hired as a, as a new coach, new teacher, and I was already on the staff, and he became my assistant coach. So we go way back, and we've got a developed over that period of time pretty much a mutual admiration society because he was this, uh, as a young coach, he was a go-getter, fireball, always had new ideas and good ideas. And, uh, you know, from there when he moved on, I, I hated losing him. To this day, I still regret him ever leaving us. Uh, but I knew it was going to be very, very successful no matter where he went. The titles have continued to grow in girls cross country, and he has over 25 indoor and outdoor track titles. Coach Dupe is incredibly passionate about the character of kids. He's incredibly passionate about getting his kids to be competitive on and off the track and cross country field. And so it's just, it's a pleasure to watch that passion come out each and every day for a guy that's been around at Episcopal since about 1978. Duplashen has been recognized as National Coach of the Year three times in 2012, 13, and 18. In 2019, he was inducted into the Louisiana High School Sports Hall of Fame. And in 2020, Max Preps rated him as one of the nation's top 100 coaches. And that list covers all sports. He has such a strong fiber of character. He really wants to be the best person that he can be and he wants to share that with his student athletes and try to help them grow into productive young men and women. Sometimes people find the right place to do what they love. That's certainly what this guy has done for closing in on 50 years. Tonight, high school athletics shines as he joins the fabulous list of prep coaching inductees. There may be a celebration in his hometown of Mamu tonight, although many of them could be right here in the event center. Ladies and gentlemen, a coaching legend in Louisiana track and field, and now Louisiana Sports Hall of Famer, Clanny Duplashen. No, there's no party. There's no party in Mamu tonight. Mamu's in Natchitoches. They're all here. It's going to be over here in a little while. I know you told me. I know you told me at the hotel you're losing your voice, so we're going to make it through. Yeah. And then you, you, these you, guys we'll, pushed me through too much this week. <laughs> I mean, my gosh. Like you pushed them as a coach. Uh, you get the Episcopal job. You were 24. You had football and track, and then you dropped football. Did you ever think you were going to go back to football? I did. Um, when I dropped football, I had six years in football at Episcopal. <clears throat> hope you can hear me. And my kids were about, not from the fourth floor, but from here, about this high. And uh, so I wanted to see them a little bit more. And so Brandon LeBlanc was my assistant coach. So we got and I just swapped out and I went to cross country and he stayed, he became the head football coach. And I really was going to, uh, planning on going back. But um, I really fell in love with the sport of cross country and I, I stayed with those kids. You certainly have done it well, 65 titles Thank and you. counting. I know you just had a 25 straight title string that just snapped in fall, so I know you're ready to get that. Where, Glenn Moore is here. Where are you, Glenn? Can you imagine still coaching to Baylor another 24 years and winning titles like every year? That's what this man has done. I mean, over 40 years at Episcopal with 65 titles. Um, but you told me you do it with the kids. You enjoy the kids. I'm curious as a coach, when you started – there was no Instagram, there was no TikTok, there was no social media, Facebook and all this stuff. Um, how has it changed coaching the kids you coached when you first started, building the program as you did, and the, coach, and the, the kids that you're, that you're coaching now? I, I don't see that much difference. The only difference is that the kids back then did, did not have cell phones, so they really gave you eye-to-eye -eye contact. There was a little bit more. Uh, they were a little bit more coachable. Now it's a little bit different coaching kids, and you all know that, the coaches that are in here. 
but they still, a lot of them still have that heart, that character, and they still, you know, if you, if you work hard, if you consistently come to practice every day, if you push yourself, especially in a sport like distance running, which some of you know, you're going to be successful. And I think, again, the question, there's not that much difference in my sport. I can't say it in other sports, but in cross country, it has been pretty much the same way the whole way through. Uh, you certainly set a line of expectation for what has been nothing but success at Episcopal, and you told me you, you don't touch the trophies. With as many trophies as you've won, you don't touch the trophies, do you? I, it's, it's not my trophy. Uh, I, I try to get the kids to buy in to them owning the team. It's their team. And so if they can take ownership, especially the seniors, it, I think then it becomes a magic and, and they want to win because they want to win, not because I want to win. And I just like to sit back and watch them go get the trophies. It's just a great experience. Well, before you got to Episcopal, I know you were, uh, started working with Pete Boudreaux. We saw him in the video. Um, you wanted the baseball job. It wasn't there. So they said, hey, go hang out with Pete and do track. And of course, here we are now, you as a Hall of Famer, 47 years later. What's that relationship been like with Pete and how much have you tried to mirror what you've done and continue to do off of what you learned from Pete. Pete, you're here tonight and you, you know you mean the world to me. Um, that was the change of my life because I was a, a decent baseball player at Mamo High School, you know, and I really wanted to do football and baseball. That was my career. That's what I thought it was going to be. And I, I, I got to Catholic High and the, the principal there said, you go talk to Barrett Murphy and you all decide what you're going to do. And he said, you're, you're doing football and you're doing track because we don't have room in baseball this year. And my heart kind of sank, but I, I needed money. You know, that, that $3,000 I got that year, and that was awesome, 1975. Um, it's a big, big raise, trust me. Um, so I went to Pete, and again, my heart was still with baseball. I kept looking at the baseball field, and my heart was still there. But he changed my mind, and he basically uh, made me start loving the sport of track and field. And I learned so much from him on how to coach people and not how, how to coach the sport. And I think if you coach people first at any level and not the sport first, you're going to be successful. Did you tell me you have a grandchild through school that you want to at least keep coaching until the grandchild's graduated? Well, he's a junior. Yeah, I'd like to see him through. Um, I recently gave up teaching this year. I have a seventh grade grandchild that I know. We're going to have to look at the, the date on that one. Uh, I guess maybe 80 years old, but then Pete is setting up like some a lifetime coaching record. I mean, Pete's going to probably be 95 before he stops coaching. So I don't know if I can go that long, Pete. But um, I, I think I could possibly make my second one, you know, and go another eight years. Well, I know they're ready to start a new string at Episcopal. Before we say goodnight, and I know Mamu was here with you. I know you've got some thank yous you'd like to, uh, yeah. you'd like to hand out. Vic, I said I wasn't going to read it. But you know, feel free. The floor I don't is yours. want to take too long, so I'll time I'll time this, and it's one twenty-five point six four. <laughs> if you don't laugh, thank you. One of the things I do in coaching, as I do in my life, I have priorities. One is God. Second is family. Third is your job. Fourth is recreational. And fifth is social. And so I thought I'd take the top two and go from there. So obviously I'd like to thank God for without his guidance, I would never have reached any of these goals. I'd like to thank my various families. I have all kinds of families here tonight. My personal family, my wife Phyllis of almost 50 years, never could I have done anything without her. She's amazing. She's our Mamu valedictorian and she She's one reason I'm here, because I probably wouldn't have gone to school. But um, my wonderful children, Allison and Dean, and their families for their support throughout the years and allowing me to coach, because it took a lot of their time. I don't know if they're still mad at me, but hopefully this makes up for it, okay? My Mamu family, my brother Rob sitting over there, my brother, there you go, Rob. My brother-in-law, Tom, and all their wonderful families for the constant support of my coaching endeavors. And also my grandfather, Joseph, for showing me the value of hard work at a very young age. My Mamo high school family education, especially Coach Floyd Oquang, my high school football coach, for giving me the right track in my life. 
and my friends who continue to care for me in my coaching career. I have my Episcopal High School family here tonight, many of them. All the teachers I've worked with, all six headmasters I've worked with, and my two outstanding athletic directors, thank you. My coaching staff, family from Episcopal, especially, again, Catholic High School coach, I've already talked to you, Pete, I'm done with you, all right? <laughs> no, I'm joking. Pete continues to guide me today. My family of athletes and their parents, many of you are here tonight, without all the athletes and supportive parents I have worked with throughout my coaching career, I would not be here tonight. My Elliott Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame family, I feel like after going through this week, I feel like I'm family with these guys for cho choosing me to represent this wonderful organization and for an outstanding three days of fun and excitement. I had so much fun I can't speak. Um, Finally, a huge thank for all of my family, fellow coaches, and friends who made it here tonight. Uh, it's a long drive for some of you. I'd like to congratulate the other inductees here tonight. I truly have learned so much from you. You are an inspiration to me, and I definitely will come back just for this experience. It's such an honor to be able to share this stage with you. Thank you. All in all, I'm getting there. It's 1.64 left, okay? All in all, I'm so humbled to be here tonight representing such an outstanding organization. Thanks to everyone associated with the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame in this great induction ceremony. I'm so proud to be able to represent all our track and cross country coaches in Louisiana. We have some of the most talented and outstanding coaches in the entire nation here in our own state. Thank you very much. That's very well, very well written, very well said. Certainly not only one of the best in the state, but one of the best in the, uh, in the country. It's been my honor to share some stories, wonderful stories. I hope you've enjoyed them from the members of the class of 2022. And there's no better way to end it than on this one. Mamu, get on your feet. Clady Duplashan in Hall of Fame. Congratulations, Coach. Lanny, thanks for y'all being here tonight from Mamo. Hey, we need all of our Hall of Famers to come up. We're gonna take a picture, then we're gonna let you go. So if you were in the Walk of Legends, you're in the class of 2022, please come up here. Uh, Gerald Boudreau, Pete Boudreau, Tim Brando, Dee Dee, if you're still here, Hollis, uh, Marie Gagnard, Dr. Garrett, Yvette, are you still here, and Bert? I hope she's gone. Okay. Pam Jones, Eddie Kennison, uh, Doug Landry, represented by son Jeff, Harold Porter, T. Berry. T. Berry's coming up here. Sheila Thompson Johnson, and Coach Vining, also the class of 2022. Y'all can clap for these wonderful people. Thanks to Eric and Renee for being here for, for um, excuse me, Andy and Renee for being here for Eric. Jay Cicero, Steve Duhon, Clanny's up here, uh, Jari. Corey, thanks to you and Aaron being up here for Eddie. Garland Foreman, Susan Jackson, uh, Colleen and Tony and Justin and Austin. Brittany and also Kyle Williams is your class of 2022. We're going to take their picture and then you can have them. So give us just a second until T. Berry gets up here. Yeah. That'll be great. We're just going to barn for a minute and then we'll give them back to you and they're yours for the rest of the night.